We can I ask you a question? Yeah. What the fuck is GOTV? GOTV? Like G O T V. Like get out the vote. Oh. That's it? Yeah. It means get people to go vote. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Did you think it was a streaming platform? I did. (laughs) I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm doing my best. I'm recording. Yay, we're recording. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry it's so early, Casey. It's okay. You got stuff to do. I'm doing very early in the morning for me, but not early for you. No. No. And it's not even that. It's like a normal time. It's 7.30. In the morning, it's well, just depending that. on depending on like who you are and what time you wake up, you know. Yeah, Some I'm people the kind don't wake of person that, that like wakes up the second before I have to do anything. Uh-huh. So you know, I'm listen. I have clothes on. I'm proud of myself for that. I am truly proud of you <laughs> for wearing clothes. I mean, it's not like when I did the podcast naked. <laughs> without a shirt on. Was that last week? I don't even know when it was. It was last week or a couple weeks ago. Listen, you were hot. I mean. I was hot. I was hot. It was just like do? sticky. It was just like, it was very um, humid. Uh, Humidity? I feel good. I uh, feel good. You feel good this morning? I feel pretty. I voted. Oh, that's a good feeling. And it's I like- voted. It was so easy. Oh, good. Like, So easy. Yeah. Um, Okay. I don't know if Eli has voted yet, but he heard your call out on the podcast last week. He understood why you— Wow, Eli. Wow. Why you guessed it was him and you Mm -hmm. were correct. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But he did take his ballot off the kitchen table, so it would uh, be—so I wouldn't be able to say whether he voted or not. But I'm sure he's voted by now. If you voted, he's voted, I'm sure. Uh, well, we don't know. We've yeah, got, guys, similar eight, timetable. Eight but more it, days, I think. Yeah. Seven, well, six. not even. The what next day is time, it? I don't even know. Today is Tuesday, but you'll be hearing this on Wednesday. And so you will only have six more days to vote. And next week, we're mm-hmm. going to do the podcast. We're going to record it on Wednesday so we can talk about what happened in the election Instead of recording on Tuesday as the election day is happening and then releasing a podcast that's like not reacting to, you know, to anything. Yeah. Um, Well, I was like very happy to vote early. I am going to go. I have to go back to Atlanta one more time to work again. Okay. And I think I'm I'm going to I've been talking to Stacey Abrams um like foundation. Yeah. Um but I've been talking to them about uh, while I'm there if I have some time I will go go volunteer. There's a bunch oh, of things to be done. I also just want to say this and I highly recommend it cuz everybody was very appreciative at my polling place. It was not crazy there, but I thanked everyone for volunteering. Oh, good. That's good because that's know? a big job. It is. And like depending on what state you're in or, you know, like what's happening, like it can be – some people like can imagine it's like not the most pleasant experience because I think sometimes people are rude, you know? For real, people are rude and they're and they're probably really stressed and, you know, and I know that there's like – this increased kind of presence at polling places this year where people have appointed themselves like these motherfuckers, these assholes in Arizona. I'm sorry, guys. They continue to embarrass me. Yeah. Uh, as a, as a, Arizona is my home state, you know. It's you a know rough this. one. It is. But so much. Wait. I mean, so much is happening. Girls 5 Eva. Moving to Netflix. Yes. We finally get to talk about it. (laughs) You guys, you guys, you guys. It's yet another case of a thing where you didn't tell me, but I kind of knew based on something someone else told me. What are you talking about? I told you so long ago. No, I know, but you didn't tell me like it was officially done. I didn't. No, I didn't know. 
We literally oh, okay. found out. So basically, guys, I might have just, known before you. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Well, Tina, I don't know. Tina Fey, Tina Fey texted me. She's she's in England working, and she mm-hmm. texted me at like three in the morning, the day. Oh my gosh! Two days before it was announced. Okay. okay. Um, but you and I just hadn't hadn't talked. So okay, guys, back it up in case you missed the Instagram announcement. Although. <laughs> High traction on that Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. Post. Interesting. Maybe Netflix uh, gets a lot. Of, I don't know. I don't fucking know. Who knows what's happening? Also, the Elon Musk. There's so many things to talk about. Oh, my God. We got to get into it. Okay. We got to get into it. So let's start with my news because yeah, <laughs> I'm most deal. excited about that. Yeah. Um, and the voting. I voted and also. So in July... We hadn't heard about the show and everybody, we were like, what's happening? And we, yeah. we love the show and we know the show is so good. And if you are one of the people who has figured out a way to watch the show, thank you and thank you. And I don't know, honestly, one person who hasn't watched the show that doesn't love it. I'm not kidding. Right. I'm not kidding. Right. When people get a chance to watch it, they like love it. Right. Um, but in Forch, you know, be it... Uh, you know, result of the fact that there are so many different streaming services at this moment in time, Mm -hmm. that Peacock was a relatively new streaming service that hadn't quite figured out or is still trying to find their footing in terms of like how they market shows and how they release shows. Um, You know, there's all kinds of things go into this stuff. We know into making television and keeping TV on the air. Right. Um, <clears throat> so in July, when I was in LA, actually, we've been like, at, I, like, what's going on? What's going on? And Tina kept saying cryptically, Tina and Eric kept saying like, I think we're going to find out next week. You guys, for like two months, they were telling <laughs> us that. I think next right. week. I think we're right. going to find out next week. I think we're going to find out next week. And then it was like 4th of July. And then, but I was like, this is weird. And I did not have a good feeling about it. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, yeah. when you just kind of know. You know. Because it's yeah. just, you just know. And, but then part of me was also like, what else are they, do- like, what else is Peacock? Like, why wouldn't they? The show's right. critically acclaimed. Like, the second season was so strong. Um, like, I just felt like, I didn't understand exactly what was happening. So on the plane, on the way back, guys, do you remember, did you listen to that podcast where I was so uncomfortable on the plane because my seat was kind of like pitched forward? Yes. Well, now add to that, that as I'm standing there watching the flight attendants wrestle with my seat, trying to fix it, I receive a phone call like in the air. Yeah. 30,000 feet up. You know, like how sometimes your phone, because it's on Wi-Fi or whatever, like a, a call will randomly come through. Yeah. You can't yeah. answer it. Yeah. Like nothing happens. Right. But it but like you... shows up that somebody yeah. is calling you. Yeah. And it was Paula Pell. And Paula and I are like very good friends, but we don't really call each other unless we're texting first. And then well, we yeah, like... Yeah. Nobody calls anybody. No one calls any. Well, I have a couple friends that I call. Oh, okay. I do. But anyway... But Paula tries to call me and I'm like, oh my God, what's happening? And then she tries again. I'm like, my heart dropped. And I was like, oh no. And I texted Paula, I'm on an airplane. And she's like, okay, well, uh, you heard what's happening. (laughs) This is like the most ridiculous text to get when you don't know, when you haven't heard what's happening. When you don't know, yeah. And then, you know, she proceeded to like fill me in a little bit because the agents who represent Tina and her production company and also Paula and also Meredith Scardino, Richard Waits and Dave Miner, our friend and old producer from Busy Tonight, yeah. who's her manager, had been working on a thing. They had they had heard from Peacock that they weren't prob- like not going to renew the show. Yeah. Um, and they had been like searching a new home for it. But this, a streaming to streaming transition has never happened. And now I understand why. 
Right, right. Because it was so complicated. The deal was so complicated to do because of international rights and territories and like stuff that like, guys, we don't care about. Right. Because we just want to watch the shows we want to watch. Right. You know? And so when you're, when one streamer is like, decides to cancel a show, you're like, well, like I remember when One Day at a Time was canceled at Netflix. Yeah. And we were like, why can't it go somewhere else? Well, now I think I have a better understanding. A better idea, yeah. Of how difficult it was. All of this to say, Netflix, thank you. Thank you to the lawyers at Peacock and everybody who like made it all happen. And yeah. especially shout out Richard Weitz and Dave Miner for making the deal come through because it obviously was super complicated and involved like international rights and territories and Netflix. I don't even fucking know. But yeah. all I know is that we are so thrilled. I, from, when I like found out it was a possible, that they were trying to make it happen, I was like, it's happening. Like, I just was like, I know it's going to work out. Like, I yeah. felt really good about it. Renee, because her husband kind of like works in television on the executive side, uh-huh. ha- was like definitely more skeptical. Yeah. Paula, I think was like, trying to remain hopeful and optimistic. And Sarah was more with me. Sarah was more like, oh yeah, that this is happening. Like, we're gonna, <laughs> this is going to happen. Um, and it wasn't that Renee wasn't like, didn't want it to. She was just like, I'm going to believe it when it happens. Right, right. You know? And Renee was, Renee took the me position. Renee was very you about it. <laughs> and she was also like very, she is also very, you know, she was always very quick to say in any of our like group chats or calls or whatever, like, I, like, we deserve the best. Like, we deserve yeah. another shot. Like, I'm praying that this works out. I just yeah. know how complicated this whole thing is. And I'm, I'm, you know, I'm like just cautiously, cautious, very, very cautiously optimistic, but yeah. not super. She wasn't like me where I was like, oh, it's happening. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, that's how I have to exist in the world. Yeah. I was going to say, everybody's doing what they have to do to remain, you know. Sane. Sane. Yeah. But I literally, when I got back, not understanding the complexity of what the deal was or whatever, I literally thought it was going to be like done in two days. Right. I thought I would be going back to work now or I would already be back at work. Um, And then it just kept like dragging on and on and on. And I was like, I do not understand what's happening. Um, And then someone under, like someone explained it to me about the rights and the territories that they had to go like place by place and get back for Netflix and renegotiate every single deal. Right. Which is hundreds of deals. Yeah. So much. I thought it was just like the cast. (laughs) <laughs> right. And the producers. We're done. Right. Um, it was not. So anyway, all of us to say, so excited. The first two seasons of our show will be available on Netflix. Yay. I don't know when yet. They haven't announced that, the specifics of that yet. But like, you'll be able to watch if you haven't watched Girls 5 Eva because you're like, couldn't figure out Peacock, um, I get it. Or it wasn't available where you live. Or it wasn't available where you live. I get it. And now you're going to be able to see it on Netflix. Uh, And then season three coming, I mean, hopefully this summer, we're going to start filming it in the spring. So that's so great. I have like a a tentative start date. So I'm so, so, so thrilled. And people, the response was like very overwhelming. Yes. From the fans for sure, yeah. but like also yeah. from Vanity Fair and Entertainment Weekly and like all of the publications, the entertainment publications were really supportive and excited. And well, I that's am good. so grateful. Everybody deserves it, but I feel like you in particular deserve it because you've been on a couple things that were like iconic big hits, but also you've been through this fucking thing, this like industry doesn't make sense kind of thing more than your fair share for someone that, you know, that really puts your heart and soul into it. So you really deserve it. Everybody does, Thank but you. you just you just deserve to, you know, to have a shot. I just am excited. I honestly am excited for people to really see it 
Yeah. Because I think that with Netflix, you there's just a better opportunity for people to find it and yeah, see it. Yeah, it's just and a broader, people know a, Netflix yes. and they're already on it and yes. they don't have to figure out how to get it. To, yes. Yeah. It and just, it serves it up to people much more easily. Yeah. And I'm just like so excited for that because I'm so proud of like the first two seasons that we yes. did. Yeah. That I was going to be like, I was, I would have been really bummed if it had just like gone quietly and then yeah. just sort of like disappeared. And then people probably would never see it. And then like, what, you know, like it would be like a freaks and geeks type thing, like in right. 10 years, like right. someone would, it would like get picked up by yeah. something. And then people like, would be like, what happened to this show? It was so good. I told you that when, uh, the kids watched Freaks and Geeks when they were at, when they were like preteens, and mm-hmm. they loved it so much. And then Lincoln asked me to uh, help him get the addresses of NBC executives to write them angry letters for canceling it. And I was like, I think some of these dudes are dead. I don't know. I, I mean, mean, they're definitely like- they're deaf. They're for sure definitely not at NBC. Oh my god! <gasps> Guess who I saw last night trick or treating? Who? George Cheeks. Oh my gosh! I know. He's at CBS now? CBS, yeah, okay. CBS. Yeah. So guys, George Cheeks was very involved and busy tonight yeah. in the beginning he stages. He was a, a champion, a champion of, the, of, of the show. Me and Casey and the show. He loved it. He got it. He was amazing. And then he left. <laughs> He left. And then he got a better job offer. Yeah. He's just been, he's been on an upward trend of success. He really has. But like, Uh, I mean, we never begrudged our friend George Cheeks his upward mobility. No. We love it for him. Yeah, We didn't love it for our show. (laughs) But we did love it for him. But I also just love him. And he, when he, you know, he was great to us always. And uh, he, I ran into him. He was at a friend's house. Outside, trick or you know, for, the, for all the trick or treaters, and uh, he, I could, I like, it, he's unmistakable. I mean, like you oh, know yeah. George Cheeks as yeah. soon as you see him. But he said my name, and I looked over, and I was like, George Cheeks! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> um, it was so fun, and yeah, it was like really nice to see him, and oh, he was very good. excited about Girls by Lava. Oh, good. I'm glad. Yeah. That happens a lot. Hollywood break. That happens a lot. I've worked on a number of TV shows where uh, an executive, a really powerful person is so excited about what you're doing and they're really championing, like, especially when something is new or it's like undergoing like a change, like a retool or something. Like that. He has nothing to do with Universal at this point. Like he's not at Universal or whatever. He's a huge fan of the show. He's like, oh, I watch both seasons. I love it. Right, He's like, it's, right. it's my favorite. I can't wait yeah. for more people to, to find it. Yeah. So, but that happens yeah. a lot when an executive is like in charge of your show. And then you're like, oh my God, this is so great. This person who's in charge of everything loves what we're doing. And like, it's going to be amazing. And then come to find out they like leave the place. Uh, oh, like, you were saying two weeks that. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. No, I misunderstood okay. the Hollywood break. And you're kind of like, and then your show is turned over to a bunch of people that weren't with you through like all of the beginning stages and don't seem to get it and aren't championing it in the same way. And it's just how it goes, you know, like it is in a way yes. those executive, like we complain about executives a lot, but in a way those executive roles are creative in some way in that like the person has to be able to see the vision for it and get on board with it and it doesn't always happen and and in fact it happens a lot the other way where the people are like I just don't get this and they kind of like are like so I'm gonna (laughs) put it in a sack and drown it or whatever I don't know whatever they do yeah yeah they do that's exactly what they do I believe (laughs) I believe it's a sack (laughs) <laughs> that we were put in on Busy Tonight. It happens a lot. It's not the only show I've ever worked on where that has happened. You oh, know? no. And it happens in in many different ways and to many different kinds of creators. Like, it happens to writers a lot when they're yeah. um, developing a pilot or a movie even. Like, it's happened mm-hmm. to Mark and Abby before where yeah. they've been developing a movie that everybody on the executive 
team at like whatever film company is like gung ho. And it's like, we're going to be making this movie in four months. And then there's like a big shakeup at the movie company. And then the movie gets shelved. Yeah. You know, like, and then you're just like, well, I guess you got to move on, you know? Yeah. And I will say it is hard. I will say one thing that I've always been impressed with by Mark and Abby's career, um, just because I've like had a front row seat for so much of it in the last 17 years, um, is their ability to move on. Like sometimes people get Hollywood break still. This is still a Hollywood break. Sometimes sometimes creators get really um, fixated on a specific idea. Yeah. And they're like, that's the only thing that I'm doing. It's the, oh, I'm yeah. going to make this work somewhere, somehow. And while that in and of itself is also sort of admirable in its own way, sometimes it's like, yeah, but also like just you can come up with other ideas. You have other right. ideas, you right. know, and you have to be able to be a little bit flexible in that way because after like the fourth person who's like, no, we don't want to do that. Like, right. you know, right? maybe. Well, it, it's it's something that I try to talk to um, a lot of young creators about at that festival that I do work with in Duluth, the Catalyst Festival. Um, a lot of people and... Not not just young creators, sometimes like, you know, creators that are my age too and that are still hoping to break into the business, which is possible. Like, it happens. I'm still hoping for new and exciting things to happen in my career. We're so, gonna, it's happening, Casey. It's happening. It's happening. But what I wanted to say is so many people will come and say, like, I've been working on this idea for 20 years. And what I always want to stress to people, this is still Hollywood break, is that like... You can't hold on to something, I don't think, for 20 years if it's exclusively the only thing you're doing. You know what I mean? Like, Tina Fey revealed to us in Duluth, I think that she's been working on a screenplay for 13 years, but... That's not all Tina Fey has been working on for 13 years. She's obviously been doing a number of other things, but she said lots of things with us. Yeah, and she hasn't (laughs) she hasn't written anything else uh, a screenplay since Mean Girls, which was shocking to me because I always think Mean Girls was like two years ago. You know, know, no matter how no matter how much evidence to the contrary. But the thing is, is that like a lot of people have great ideas, Mm -hmm. but. It's never just in the idea. It's never, you know what I mean? Like, well, take Girls 5 Eva, for example. You, I remember a podcast where you were like, did you know there's, a, like, three other shows about, like, groups that reformed, like, after they had, like, a big hit? Oh, my God. Wait, I remember <laughs> a, bu- a bunch of years ago, I had a manager who also was Molly Shannon's manager. Yeah. And, you know, Molly's, like, probably 15 years older than me. Yeah. And so she was probably in her mid-40s in this yeah. moment in time. And she had a, either a pilot or a movie that she was attached to that they were putting together about a former girl group. Oh and my gosh. I Because I remember my manager at the time was like, oh, I just wish you were a little bit older. That's how he, <laughs> that is how he talked. I just wish you were a little bit older because you could be, you would be so great in it, but I just don't <laughs> buy it. You're 28. <laughs> You know what I mean? Whatever. It was like, but I remember at the time being like, oh, I am bummed. That is my dream. So, you know, and then like, yeah, there are other people who've had like pilot scripts about uh, the girl groups. There's uh, that other show that is really good that I like about like the R&B girls. Is it Queens? It might be Queens. It, Brandy's With, um, in it? Brandy, yes. yeah, yeah. I watched um, it. I and really liked also, it. Also, there was like the the farcical MTV one with the boy group that reformed, uh, uh, right? Years ago, I don't remember. I think so. The point is that I'm trying to make is that like having a great idea is great, but it's really in the execution of something, you know, because obviously there's been a million police shows, a million hospital shows, and nobody's ever saying like, oh, there already is or was a Grey's Anatomy. You know what I mean? Like we can never do another hospital show. Yeah. Yes. Hill Street Blues. Hill Street Blues and Hill Street Blues was Blue. Hill Street Blues was uh, Cops. Cops, but there was another one 
at the same time that was that was uh, medical because my mom loved it, and then there was ER. Oh, um, I was like a little Chicago little kid. Hope, Chicago Hope, and ER. Chicago re- Hope, I think, was after ER. No, they were at the same time because, and they both took place in Chicago. Here's why I know because Anthony Edwards was a guest on the Rosie O'Donnell show when he was on ER and he sang a song that I wrote and I know that one of the jokes in the songs about ER was if they fire me I hope they hire me down the street at Chicago Hope. Okay. That's why that's why that sticks in my brain I that you. they were on at the same time. Guys, ants, ants and a bug's life. You know what I mean? People <laughs> yes. have similar ideas. Yes. And they they're they always wind up being very different. So anyway, if oh, you ever have Oh my I- god. What? The one of the biggest ones was cuz I was like definitely in audition vibes trying to get a pilot back yeah. back then. Um was 30 Rock. Oh, and, and Studio, 60. Studio 60 on the Sunset Trip, Strip, Trip, <laughs> basically. Uh, <laughs> Studio 60 on the Sunset Strip by Aaron Sorkin. Yes. And it was 30 Rock with Tina Fey or Studio 60 on the Sunset Strip with Aaron Sorkin. And guys, I'm just going to say something right now. <laughs> I was like, I mean, obviously the Aaron Sorkin one is going to be like, incredible. I thought the same. Because it's Aaron Sorkin. I thought the same. And it was not incredible. Hilarious unintentionally? Unintentionally hilarious. Totally bizarre. Like yeah. one of the weirdest. To- I actually watched every episode because it was like yeah, I so watched it weird. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But I, it was, that's so funny. And you they wanna, came out at the same time. You want to know like, how long ago that was? No, it was the same season. It was the same pilot yeah, season. Yeah, Do you want to know how long ago that was? I know how exactly. Long? It was 17 years ago. You know why? Oh, my God. Because I had just started dating Mark. Yeah. And uh, we went, he took me on a fancy vacation. Guys, yeah. listen, you know me. I love a fancy vacation. And I was like really bummed because I couldn't, I couldn't like get seen on either show. Yeah. And so then I was just like working on characters because I guess for the for the Studio 60 audition, you had to like, it was like they were trying to like make it like you actually were auditioning for SNL. Oh, so and you so had then, to do like a character or whatever? Yes. No, you had to do like three characters oh and like kind of like stand up or whatever. And so on our vacation, I was like working on these things. And I honestly, then I was a little bit like, should I audition for SNL? (laughs) You know what I mean? Because then I was like, I, it was really fun. And you know me, I was like, you could have done it. Guys, I was good at it. I was fucking good at it. And I did entertain that like thought for two and a half seconds. But then I was like off, like basically offered that sitcom on UPN, Love Inc. Love Inc., but any, the point is, didn't get in for either show. Oh, my never, gosh. Like, never even, neither one of them even saw me, even though there was, like, a recasting situation on 30 Rock. And oh, right. I was, I was ch- trying to, for Jenna Maloney. Right, right, because it was originally Rachel Dratch, right? Right, uh-huh. And they just, like, they, re, I th- it wasn't that Maroney, Jenna Maloney. I think. Maroney, yeah, you're right, you're right. <laughs> I think Jenna Maroney was a new character. Yeah. Totally yeah. like different. That wasn't yeah. like they rewrote they, re- they worked, rewrote it and they yeah. reworked the show yeah. from and what Dratch, I remember. Yeah, Dretch was brilliant and she's brilliant in everything. So. But she was and she became like recurring in like yeah. other characters yeah. and like was like playing like multiple characters in the show, yeah. which always made me laugh. Um that's so funny. But um, I was like wanted to go in on that. And then they were like, you're too young. And I'm like, fuck that. And I'm like, guys, it all works out. Here we there are. You go. Well, you keep, you keep, you know, if anyone tells you you're too young, good news. You won't always be. Someday you get in there. You know how like when you make a joke that you think is so funny, but it just, I don't know. Here's what I'll tell you. 
Uh, this guy that I know, Mike Rowe, recently wrote an oral history of 30 Rock, a really great book that he asked me to blurb. And I gave him like a choice of blurbs. Um, and I forget which one he used. And I'm sure it's great. And I'm sure it was great. I'm sure it was great. But uh, one of them that I wrote was uh this is a great book but I do think it's weird that Mike released it at the same time that my oral history of Studio, Studio 60. 60 on the sun shut up came out. <laughs> and I thought it was the funniest joke in the world and I was so sad but I was like I get it it's like very inside Wait, it is honestly <laughs> it is really funny um I made myself laugh so hard and then can I just tell you something I hate it when I think something is so funny I was just talking to um our friend Ashley Nicole Black about like jokes that we think are so funny that we put into something and we know they're going to be, they're going to make us take it out. I literally can't remember a fucking thing I've done in my life except for every joke that I was made to take out of something because, <laughs> because it wasn't appropriate, but I thought it was the funniest thing in the world. And I was like, I can't, I can't remember what my schedule is for the week, but I can remember something that I wrote in like 1998 that I'm still bitter <laughs> about having it cut. <sighs> I still remember the joke that I was forced to say on a TV show against my will because I said that it was transphobic and I was told to shut the fuck up and say it. And oh my I God. got really, and this was like, of course, many years before transphobic became a th thing that people like really were aware yeah. Of, yeah. of, but I was like, and I actually, <clears throat> to be fair, to I'm making myself sound like I'm a hero. Like I didn't know the word transphobic back right, then. Right. But I was like, this does not sit right with it's me. Like right. I don't yeah. I don't like it and I don't want to say it. And they're like, well you're your character and you say what we write. And I was like, but I I really have I'm the one that has to say it and I feel really right. um uncomfortable. And I had even brought in uh my own pitches for right. other jokes in yeah. that spot. Yeah. And it was like like people were called and then I was like essentially told like, okay, well, we can do your we can do your alts, but you have to say the joke. And I And you I mean, know that and, they're gonna put that in the Of course. Cut. Yeah. And I and I did because, you know, I was I'm like an act, you know, you're for hire. I yeah. could get literally get fired. It was, you know, right. it's like a network show, whatever. Right. right. And I remember being at this panel a couple years later with all these like showrunners that are very, um, you know, like it, it was actually a panel that was held by Planned Parenthood and <clears throat> about like how to be inclusive and in, like your shows and how to, how to be mindful of the things that like, you know, you and I talk about like yeah. pronouns and, you know, when you're right, like it, it is for a lot of people, I think, especially writers who work in TV and have for a long time, like, they just go back to their rote, like, ways of being. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like, ways yeah. of describing characters, like, the ways of thinking of characters. And, uh, you know, and I we've talked a lot about this. Like, yeah. I think that one way we can do better culturally is by having creators uh, be aware and make content that is reflective of the world that we live in and isn't just completely, you know, showing just some weird homogenized version of the same thing over and over and over again. Yeah. Because you know a lot I mean? of times it's just like, it's just weirdly like ego and fear because it's not like your whole episode or series hinges on making this joke that's in, not in poor taste, but like actually hurtful, you know, not just right. in poor taste, but hurtful to someone. And like, so that's a weird thing. And it's always, I'm sure we've talked about this on the podcast. I talked about it with Tina in Duluth. It is the hardest thing to be that person that speaks up and says, you know, I don't think this is right because you're automatically, you're calling someone out, you know, because there's Who's no higher way. higher up? 
Yeah, who's higher up than you. Because obviously it was approved. Right. And there's no winning because either they're going to begrudgingly go along with you and think that you're a real school marm and a stick in the mud and like... And that like you just don't get it. Right, right. Or they're going to go ahead, bulldoze you, do it anyway, and either, you know... They'll get backlash when it happens, and then every time they look at you, they're like, oh, you're so smug. You thought you were so smart, and you told us not to do that joke, and I Did pulled we have this conversation? You. Yeah, I think we've had it a million times, but I also think, like, it's worth having the conversation over and over again about how it's hard to speak up in any situation, even if it's not on a TV show, but it's fucking worth it. It's fucking worth yeah. it. And, like, fuck the person that doesn't want to hear you. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's just, it's hard. It is hard. And like, obviously, I'm in such a different position now. There's no yes. fucking way. If I walked yeah. onto a set and there was some joke that was added, I'd be, you know, that I didn't agree with or I thought was even questionable, I'd be like, right. oh, I'm, <laughs> no, absolutely <laughs> not. Call whoever you want to call. No. It would have been funny if back no. then, if you had just done like a wild, weird read of it every time so that it was impossible to use. Well, you'd I'd be like, I, I don't tried know to, why my- No, I literally tried to tank it. I tried to I don't know it. why I burp in the middle of this line every time. I just can't get through it. I did. I really did try to tank it. And I only did it one time. <gasps> oh, my gosh. But, that yeah, of course, they used it. And then years That's later, so somebody on Twitter was, like, re-watching this show. Like, right. you, busy Phillips with your trans... And I was like, okay, first of all, guys, uh, we can get into it. But there's more right. to that fucking story. Right, right. Um, and I hate it. I fucking hate it. It. Anyway, yeah. anyway, okay. we have more things to talk about that so are exciting and special. Oh, I love my kitsch. Honestly, here's the thing. We're going to start talking about presents. A lot. Like, as if we're like not talking about presents all the time, but like, <laughs> but just like gifts. things that make gifts, things that make great holiday gifts. Kitsch is one of them. We love it. I love it. I gave Birdie a bunch of kitsch stuff as a gift for ber her birthday last year. Yeah. Like, okay, so if you don't know, kitsch is like a bunch of game-changing essentials in the beauty space. <laughs> for your uh, hair, skin, for your hair, body. Yes, whatever your budget, whatever your skin type, your hair type. You can have like some little cute, nice, fun things, satin pillowcases, eye masks and hair caps. Just so you know, satin is vegan and cruelty-free, not like silk, which is made from silkworms and is not vegan and cruelty-free. They're so good for your hair and your skin while you sleep. They have shampoo and conditioner bars, the bars, bottle-free beauty, all the rage. Also the bars, great to travel with. Just going to yeah. say it. Yeah. The heatless Satin curling rollers. Birdie wants these. I haven't yeah, gotten them yet. Yeah, they're all over this is, TikTok. Yeah, yeah, because it's a very, it's a big TikTok thing. If you have a teenager, get these heatless satin curling rollers. Uh, quick dry hair towels. Never leave home without them. I'm always, I pack them. I take them with me. Yes. It's, it's a complete must for me because the more water you can get out of your hair, the less heat you have to use to dry. Correct. It. And then finally... Uh, but certainly not last, the classic hair ties and scrunchies, where it all began. Where it all began. The, I love the scrunchies so much. Yeah. Uh, again, they're made from that satin. Some of them are. They have other kinds too. But like, I like the ones that are like sort of the thinner satin hair ties. Yeah. Because I wear them when I work out and it doesn't like break my hair off. Right. You know, when you use like a one of those tight like rubber bands, it breaks your hair off. Yeah. Um, what feels better than buying something for someone that you know they're going to use, you didn't spend a lot of money on it, and it's like so cute and they just love it? Nothing, I mean, nothing. feels better than that. That's it. That's the dream. It's the goal. <laughs> That's all you need to know. Guys, listen up. Kitsch is your one-stop shop for all holiday gifting for your family, your besties, and all the resties. <laughs> Your kids, the teens who deserve a little something special this year. And right now, Kitsch is offering discounts site-wide anywhere from 25% all the way to 60% off all month in November. When you go to mykitsch.com slash best, you heard it. 
I said it. It's right. Discounts up to 60% off certain items at MyKitsch, spelled M-Y-K-I-T-S-C-H dot com slash best. Plus, Kitsch has daily flash sales, which are unbelievable deals. So you got to keep checking back. One more time, mykitsch.com slash best for huge holiday discounts, everything you need for holiday gifting or honestly, to treat yourself. Oh my God, you know what I brought to Casa Kismet today? What my, did you bring? My, my print fresh robe that I love because um, I'm going to get ready for the Glamour Women of the Year awards and I like wearing robes when I get ready, but I don't like wearing heavy, like, heavy robes because then I get too hot and I sweat. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, um, I brought my like cute, like leopard covered, uh, print fresh robe that I'm obsessed with. Print fresh is a woman owned luxury sleepwear and lifestyle brand size inclusive. Yes. Ranging from extra small to six X guys. We love it. If you've seen on my Instagram stories, I've been wear I wear print fresh all the time. Oh, I love them. The striped pajamas that you so have, cute. I love those. I gotta They're get so those. They're so cute. Yeah. You have to get those. For anyone who loves pattern and anyone who likes like whimsical like designs. I want to say something. They're whimsical, but they're not childish, which is I something agree. that I have an issue with. Like I'm full of whimsy, but I don't want to look like a little kid. And so I think that these are like whimsical, but really sophisticated and colorful patterns. I totally agree with you. Print Fresh. They're just, they're chic. Like it's fun to look fun and cool and chic and grown up. I agree. I agree. Um, They have a variety of styles, including men's silhouettes. Like we said, size inclusive. Honestly, everyone's guaranteed their perfect fit without sacrificing style or substance. I'm getting birdie some for Christmas too. Oh, good. Just because they're like the best, you yeah. know? They're they're just um, really nice, like yummy, luxurious fabric that holds up so well to washing. And and they just launched their digital holiday shop, which is a curated collection. Of- I know. I want to go look at it right now. You, you have to. I looked at it the second it launched. I'm not gonna lie. That's a oh, thing that I set a timer I for. Love it. Go look at it right now. And uh, but it's not just like sleepwear. They have travel bags, slippers, bedding, and more. They have everything. Everything for Wait, your I holiday didn't know they coziness. Had bedding. Yeah. Wait, when it, how long have they had bedding? <laughs> you can get that. bedding, and then you can get um, pajamas in the same print, and then oh no gosh. one will ever be able to find you in your bed. Oh my gosh, I want that. Wait, this is so exciting for me. Um, guys, I love I love the styles. I love the stuff that they have. I'm going, I'm literally going right now to look at the holiday shop. Uh, and whether you're shopping for your family or your friends or your partner, give the gift of comfort and joy. Shop early for the perfect print fresh present. We love it. And why don't you go to printfresh.com slash best, or you can use code best for 15% off your first order. See what's in store for the season and snag your gift early or grab something for yourself. That's printfresh.com slash best or use code best. Go do it. Halloween. Halloween. Was... I mean, I have to say, my children... <laughs> They Fucking killed nailed it. it. Yeah, nailed with it. their costumes. They nailed so it. So great. They really nailed it. And this was a product, and I'm just talking to my parents of the of kids out there who you you just know it. You just know it. There are years where your kids don't have an idea of what they want to be, and you buy them one thing, and then like two days before, they're like, I don't want to be that. That's lame. And then you're like pulling your fucking hair out because yeah. you have to like – figure out how to get them whatever it is that they want to be. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like there are years when kids are like, don't really have a, an idea. A big idea. Yeah. For Halloween. Yeah. This was not one of those years in my household. And it just so happened that both kids had very specific ideas of what they wanted to be like a month and a half ago. Yeah. Which gave me time to get, order all the things find all the things online, order all the things. Like that crown that Birdie was wearing 
which somebody was like, that was Princess Diana's crown. It was the queen's first. (laughs) (laughs) It belongs to the royal family. And she wore it when she was young. Yeah. Brody, like we had like pictures. Yeah, you did your research. You did your own research. Concerned about it. And just let me tell you something. No. um, But like I found like a bridal place on Etsy, you know, that like does like so great replicas. And anyway, so had but had enough time to like order that. Right. And that vintage dress, which was like, even though I did take the measurements of birth, like I have to say that dress was like weirdly like magic. It fit birdie. Fit perfectly. So perfectly. It's like from the 50s. Yeah, because she's the size of a 1950s adult. Because we used to make them smaller. (laughs) I actually don't know if that's... Can I tell you what I actually think? What? About vintage clothing. I've thought a lot about this. Yeah. Obviously, we know that, like, to a certain extent, yes, we've started to expand in size. All you need to do is look at the the footprints at Grauman's Chinese Theater. Totally. Totally. There's no size 13. But but you know what my mom always said? What? About that. In specifically what the canvas shoes didn't really come out until the 60s like um converse. Oh, so everybody wore like hard leather shoes. hard leather shoes yeah. and depending on how much money your family had you didn't get new shoes all the right. time yeah. your feet didn't grow as much you're because, basically stunting your own foot yes growth. Yeah. yeah well it is a little bit because you're like just keeping them in these little little caves, you know? Oh my gosh, you're not kidding. I mean, I could talk to you about, and I know this from the nursing home, women that wore high heels, that yes. their feet oh, are God. just basically Barbie feet, like the joke in Girls 5 Emma. Yeah. Like, they, like little old 100-year-old ladies had to wear high-heeled slippers because that's the only way their feet went. You know? <laughs> like, you can Casey, really... <laughs> that's that's ludicrous. That's I know, not, but it's no, true. There's no, there's no such thing as high heel slippers. Casey, yes, what are you talking about? Have, you've never seen like a marabou high heel boudoir yeah, slipper? Of course, yes. Yeah, that's what little ladies no. had in the nursing home. So they no. could shuffle to the bathroom. No joke. Are no you joke. Kidding? No. <laughs> that's bizarre. Or like a wedge slipper. Like a we- like if you didn't have severe Barbie feet, you could wear like a little um. What's the name of the... Is it Daniel Green? I don't know. But there was like a specific slipper brand that would be like a gold wedge slipper. I'm, I'm shook by that. In a size, I don't know. In a size five or six to shuffle to the... I do kind of like it though. Like good for them, you know? Um, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. But anyway, I think one reason why I think that those teeny tiny vintage dresses survived and are the ones that you like see so frequently in vintage stores is because... They weren't really hand me downable. Right, right. They're so tiny that it's yeah. like not a ton of people can fit into them. Right. So, like, those are the ones that are in pristine condition. As a person who's been like an avid vintage shopper, shopper for yeah. many, many years, like, I do think that there's something to the fact that, like, the teeny, teeny, tiny sizes weren't like, didn't get passed along as much right. as the sort of more like, you know, size eight, right. size 10, size right. whatever. Right. All this to say, that dress fit Birdie like a damn glove. Like a I glove. Made, I That's made that sash, uh, whipped out the, got the, dug out the sewing machine, um, <laughs> which I found and made that sash, like sewed the little ribbons together. And I had, you know, I had like vintage brooches and things. Yeah. And then the necklace that Birdie was wearing was, my mom had given it to her. It's Birdie's great, great grandmother's. Aww. I know, it's not sweet. And I keep it because I don't, I don't trust Birdie to not lose it. So, (laughs) um, yeah. But I, but I pulled it out and let Birdie wear it. And I explained to her that she can't, she couldn't lose it. Um, But she looked great. And then Dwight Schrute, Cricket killed it. Killed, killed it. it. Killed Although it. Although she really did not. I don't know. Maybe, maybe a kid at school said something to her about her hair being back. Aw. You know what I mean? Because then all yeah. of a sudden she was like, nope, my hair's not staying back. 
Oh, so, interesting. I know, which yeah. bums me out. But, well, also you know. sometimes, I know when I was a little kid, my mom used to cut my hair really short and people always thought I was a boy, um, which who cares, right? But I did care when I was little. So people would always ask like, oh, you're such a cute little boy. What's your name? And it would get, so if like just one person like misgendered her, maybe she was like, eh, you know? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Also, Who Cricket knows? has also Cricket does have like weird hair stuff too. Like all yeah. of my children. Yeah, like and like maybe it just yeah, maybe and, it just doesn't yeah. feel good to have like a low ponytail. Cricket just does what she needs to do. That's right. That's right. And so she just does it. But she really like stayed. She like hilariously stayed in character for all of trick or treating. That's so funny. Which was insane and I really funny. That. I love and, that. And uh, Birdie had gone to the suburbs with a, like with Mark drove Birdie out to the suburbs to one of her, where one of her friend's houses oh, nice. to trick or treat. And, uh, so I was just with Cricket and my friend Joanne and her daughter and, um, another friend and their kids. And, and we walked, this is, this is like really the first time we've done really done New York trick or treating. Cause last year we didn't really do it. Yeah. And it looked like you got good candy. Okay. First of all, it was the most wildest, craziest thing of all time. Yeah. Like, I could not believe it. Like, I was like, this is so fun. Um, the neighborhood we live in was, I was planning for a lot of, and I didn't, did, I have a lot of leftover candy. <laughs> but we went over into like the West Village. Yeah. So much fun. That's and where they, we lived. Yeah, I they mean, closed the streets down. Parade. Well, there's the parade, but they like also just like the residential streets where like the beautiful brownstones are, whatever. Yeah. They like shut the streets down and it's just thousands of people and kids. Yeah. And then the people with the houses, it's so great. They literally do the most creative like, you know, displays on their- Yes. On the front of their houses. But then also the- the thing that I saw, and I don't know if this happened when you were there, they made these candy shoots so that the kids didn't have to walk up and down the brownstone oh, steps. that's so fun. And so the shoots were like, basically like, imagine like a large PVC pipe Yeah, thing. oh, that's And genius. so they would put like, people would be, the homeowners or whatever would be sitting up at the top of the stoop yeah. in chairs or they, you know, and they'd like some of them were having, like people were having parties, yeah. you know, whatever. And then kids would come and they just put their little basket under the chute and they just send candy down the chute. It was I'm, so cute. I'm going to do it next year. <laughs> Even though for my three, for my three trick-or-treaters. I've never seen that for trick-or-treating, but I have seen it for drug deals. Casey, it's, Casey, it's, Casey, no. They drop the little heroin bag down the down the pipe, and then the person. What are you, what are you fucking talking I'm about? I'm just what telling you. On, what is going on with you today? Is it because it's eight in the morning? What's happened? I'm just saying. I'm not saying that's where people got the idea in New York City, but maybe. I don't think, no, I don't think so. Maybe. I think it's. I think it's, it's just. You like, know what I think. After taking my it's, tumble, it's down parallel the steps. thinking. <laughs> it's parallel yes, thinking. Life, but liability. Also, no, yes. I'm serious. After I took my tumble down my own steps, yeah, I truly every kid that came to our door, I was like, "Be careful, please." Yes, please yes. on the railing. Yes. So I actually think that there's a very legitimate yes. reason it's, to do it, which smart. is like it's very smart. Like. You don't need kids flying down your fucking steps. Hell no. You know what I mean? No. Hell no. Also, I didn't even think about this until this second, but with COVID, <laughs> six yes. feet, man. Yes. Boom. Brilliant. Drop that candy down. It's genius. I'm going to create, I'm getting some pipe next year, <laughs> some PVC <laughs> pipe next year, <laughs> and I'm going to make a shoot for our candy, even if it's only four kids, but... Because I just like, I don't need anyone falling. Yeah, you got to do it. You got, I'm going to do it. I love it. That's so oh, funny. and there was one house that was so genius. They just put the chute coming out of their window. They didn't yeah. even get, leave their house. 
They just were like, yeah. I like the people that were sitting up on the stoop. On the stoop, Like, I thought yeah. that was fun. But, yeah. Um, and then there were some people that had big signs that said, if you sing, you'll get a, fu- you'll get a full size. Uh, I love that. I know. I That's just, so it was fun. like, it was very fun. The kids had a great time. Cricket ran into so many friends from school. We had like a cute little group. And then around 6.45 p.m., which is very early, yeah. We were out literally less than an hour, I think. Maybe like an hour. At 6.45 p.m., Cricket was like, we got to get out of here. <laughs> it was just too much. It was just overwhelming. Yeah. And she yeah. was like, we got to go. We have to go now. Yeah. We have to go home. That's and how so Lincoln then, always was, too. And Eli was such a diehard trick-or-treater. Like, to the last house. To the Like, he wanted to fill up a pillowcase or whatever. And he would always trick-or-treat on Lincoln's behalf because Lincoln didn't like to go up to the houses. And he would, like, start shit with people that would be like, no, your brother has to come up and get his own candy. And he would be... We were just reminiscing last night about... Um, these like teen guys that he was like, can I have an extra piece of candy for my brother? And they were like, uh, no, your brother has to come up and say trick or treat if he wants candy. And then Eli was like, well, he's not gonna. And then he started walking down the driveway and then he was like, I don't want your stupid candy either. And then threw the candy back up the driveway. <laughs> and I was like, you've always been you. You've always been the same guy. And just like standing up for your brother. Yeah, standing up for your brother, loving Halloween, it's but cute. doesn't care if like three bigger guys are gonna possibly beat the hell out of him. Didn't I didn't care. feel scared at all like last night. But again, when I tell you we were back at Before my house <laughs> at 7 p.m. No, it was dark. It was dark. It was dark, yeah. But also, so then Cricket's little friend Olivia and her mom came back and then... uh Cricket and Olivia just watched like the Halloween episode of The Office together. Oh, perfect. And I perfect. made them second dinner chicken nuggets. Perfect. Listen, and then because they had already like, had pe- they'd p- had pizza before trick or treating. Yeah. yeah. And then they had chicken nuggets after. And then like, yeah, Joanne <laughs> and I just like hung out and talked for a while. And then, uh, yeah, and then they like got, you know, they got an Uber and left. And Aww. Cricket and I hung out and... We've been watching a series of unfortunate events together. Oh, the TV yeah. Show. Yeah. So cute. It's a good one. It's, it's good really one. good. Oh, it's really good. good. My guys had fun too, even though they're grown up. Lincoln is making up for many years of, I know I mentioned on the podcast, he would always ask for a very specific, elaborate costume that I would hand make. And then at the last minute, be like, Mom, this is so beautiful. I am not going trick or treating. So I will thank you for this. I will never put it on. Um, Eli always, uh, he was always the classics mummy, bat devil frankenstein one year that was a good one um but and he loved trick or treating but lincoln now minimum 3 halloween costumes a year so this year i think he was superman and his girlfriend dressed as lois lane he also did a little columbo and then he also did someone from a horror movie um that i'm unfamiliar with Uh, I don't know, but he looks very handsome in the pictures despite being smeared with blood. Um, (laughs) But they they helped me hand out candy last night. You know, they were coming and going, but they were so into it. And we were on our little cul-de-sac and we thought nobody would come because I guess we've always gone out on Halloween. We've never really handed out candy. But uh, a lot of kids from the neighborhood came and we actually ran out of candy and they ran back out to the store to get more candy. But it was so fun to watch them because they were like kind of hanging out with me and they were like literally going down to the end of the cul-de-sac and waving kids like onto our cul-de-sac like we have candy down here. (laughs) Which I was like could be construed as like alarming uh, you know to two big tall guys like telling kids to come down a cul-de-sac. But um But yeah, it was so funny because some of my neighbors did have candy, but they just weren't like, they just, I don't know, they weren't giving off the impression that they had candy. So I kept watching this one lady across the street. Kids would like ring her bell because her light was on. And then, you know, she's older 
and they would have been like long gone by the time she got to the door. Uh, because, so she kept like coming to the door, but the, after the kids were already like, fuck it, like no one's coming. It's and, a little bit like you kind of have to just sit You have outside. to sit out there. That's what I did. I got yeah. a lawn chair. I sat out there. But by the end of it, like Eli was like, oh, we could have done, we should do like hay rides, like down the cul-de-sac, like in a wagon or something. So kids don't have to walk. And we could like maybe put a bouncy castle, but that would like mess up kids' costumes. But, uh, what, you know, honey, they were like- we're not, you don't need to start a fair. Like what's happening? Th- they were like, there has to be a block party because this is so sad. And we think that people want to have fun and like someone just has to take control of this situation and have a trick or treat block party. So it's I was like, fun. yeah, let's get it going for but next But there are year. certain, just so you know, because I used to go- over, like, in the valley. Yeah, yeah. Trick-or-treating, because I, you know, because of where my kids went to school, and there are those neighborhoods. There are those, like, <gasps> for sure. pockets of neighborhoods, and the kids, everybody just goes there. Like, yeah. it, you know what I mean? You just drive there. In LA, you just drive there, park, and go. Obviously, we had a, this we had neighborhood... A lot of kids. Yeah, I mean, I the, think we have, like, n- we had, like, neighborhood kids whose parents probably aren't gonna take them anywhere special. Um, and they, a lot of homemade costumes, and, you know, so not... It, it wasn't, like, a super fancy crowd, um, but they were... <laughs> fancy crowd! They were, you know what Here's I mean? What, like, what did you see? What did you see the most of? I'm so curious because I was like very surprised by the number of Care Bears I saw. Oh, every, Care Bears. Okay. Everyone, all these kids were Care Bears. And I was like, what? I saw a lot of um, princesses still. A lot of princesses and like uh-huh. sort of vague like superheroes. Um, and uh-huh. then... I, one family who was like, they they hearkened back to our Westport days. One family was dressed as the Bob's Burgers family together. And Cute. the parents were walking around with cocktails in their cups, I believe. So oh, that was... by the that way, was, so was I and my mom yeah, friends. Yeah, yeah. Because saying, we were just like, we just walked from, you know, like... Yeah. We're not driving anywhere. Yeah, exactly. So that yeah. re- very much by the reminded way, me I, of... It just remind, you just reminded me, one of the moms stole my cup. <laughs> <laughs> that reminded me of Westport because most houses in Westport where we would go trick or treating would be serving cocktails to parents like out of the driveway. Um no, we had a lot of like super like manners were on a thousand with the families that we had last night. Just very very super polite, grateful little kids. And I got a little choked up. I tweeted this. This little two little boys came and uh, trick or treated, and they were so happy and so joyful. Uh, I don't know exactly where um, the parents didn't speak English. I. I don't know if they were Russian or Ukrainian, um, but the two little boys uh, were saying happy Halloween all the way down the street. They were so happy to be trick-or-treating, even though only like half the houses had candy. And then they came and they said, um, trick-or-treat. I gave them candy. And then they said, and we have something for you. And then they gave me candy. They each gave me candy. And it made me... (laughs) almost cry and they gave candy to like our very old next door neighbor and uh they waited until the lady across the street got to the door because like I could tell that uh them giving out candy was as fun for them as getting candy I don't know how they're gonna go home with more than two pieces of candy if they uh if they give candy back to every person that gives them candy but maybe that was their parents idea maybe that was the whole point Wait. Is that the- <laughs> okay I just want to say this yeah. One thing that Cricket has always loved most about Halloween yeah. is giving the candy out. Yeah, it's and super like, fun. I do think that if she just stayed home and we had a lot of trick or treaters, like yeah. that that would be the best thing. Like yeah. she wouldn't she doesn't really like going house to house like because giving candy out is the best you get to see everyone's costume yeah it's not scary because you're in your own home right you could wear a costume if you wanted but you don't have to but you don't have to right and like yeah I just feel like giving out candy is where it's at um, <laughs> that's just how Lincoln was too so Lincoln would identify very strongly with that anyway and I will say 
I thought that we weren't going to get any trick-or-treaters, but on the Nextdoor app, which can be kind of dicey in our neighborhood, they did have like a thing where you could put down that you were a house with candy. And I oh. didn't I didn't do that. So, mm. you know, so I, I did kind of roll the dice on it. But anyway, we had a good time. And like, who knows if the if the guys will actually throw any type of block party next year, but they're determined to make it a little more festive. I will say that so many families stopped to take a picture with our 12 foot skeleton. So that was good. It was I mean, a good photo opportunity. Your 12 foot skeleton really, really doing it. You know what I mean? <laughs> really doing the most. I'm so happy for you that you, that you really, that you got that. We got him. We got him. Well, my new favorite people, Wild Grain, <laughs> here we are. They sent me a thank you note about our ads. And I was like, oh. guys, I'm literally just being honest. <laughs> you don't have to thank me for being honest about how much I'm obsessed with your brand. One of my favorite things now is that Birdie and I will put a Wild Grain loaf of bread in. Yeah. 20 minutes, it comes out. We put some Nutella on it. And then we watch a show together. And it's like... Hot bread. Yeah, I made a sandwich yesterday on warm wild grain bread, and it was uh, it was something else. It wasn't like your regular old sandwich, you know. It was I something what special. I love is like that first, the first few slices out of the oven. You know what yeah. I mean? Are like yeah. the greatest because they're just like you have to be careful because I did one. I got ahead of myself. I, I ate. I ate it too fast. <laughs> <laughs> like I like put I like put it in my mouth too fast and I like it was too hot. And I do just feel like fresh bread like it's getting cold here in New York. Yeah. The smell of like that fresh baked bread in the chilly morning coming out of the oven. Yeah. Mm. It's not a dream. <laughs> it can all be yours courtesy of Wild Grain. I'm thinking ahead, right? Because like my family celebrates Christmas. A big issue is always like, what are you going to eat in the morning on Christmas? Right. I'm going to put a selection of wild grain items in the oven. I It'll love be it. Ready in 20 minutes while everyone's like, you know, opening their stockings and having coffee. It's it's going to be perfect. I actually, this is it. Obviously, is going to be perfect. <laughs> um, okay, if you guys have been sleeping during. The last few times we've talked about Wild Grain, then you've really missed some amazing conversations about our new favorite and the first bake from frozen box of artisanal breads, rolls, pastries, and handmade pastas. Wild Grain uses only clean ingredients, unbleached non-GMO flour, and utilizes a slow sourdough fermentation process that's healthier for you and tastes better than anything you can find in a grocery store ever, ever, ever. You've also, if you've heard the ads, you know, me who suffers from stomach issues. Me has who sneezes. No issues with wild grain. And I'm convinced it has to be because of some combination. Maybe it's both. Maybe it's one. Maybe it's the other of the fermentation process and the fact that they use such quality clean ingredients. Yeah. And this holiday season, they're featuring delicious new limited edition sweet treats such as pumpkin cinnamon rolls. Are you kidding me? Orange cranberry biscuits. Come on. And chocolate <laughs> avalanche croissants. We'll be all having you, them all. I'm, we're having them all. Well, we already are having them all for sure. All you have to do is you go to wildgrain.com slash busy and you sign up and then you choose what type of box you want to receive and how often. It's super easy to reschedule or to skip a shipment if you aren't going to be in town or to even cancel it if you're like, this isn't for me, but it's going to be for you. I promise because yeah. it's for us. Guys, it's for us. Those croissants, man, I am not kidding you. They have like renewed my will to wake up every morning. They're so good. <laughs> Guys, are you hungry already? Well, listen, for a limited time, you can get $30 off the first box plus free croissants in every box when you go to wildgrain.com slash busy to start your subscription. You heard me. Free croissants in every box and $30 off your first box when you go to wildgrain.com slash busy. That's wildgrain.com slash busy, or you can use promo code busy at checkout. I'm just going to tell you this. 
You got to get to it. You got to go. You got to do it. Do it now. Blue land. Blue land. No? Um, (laughs) I like that one. But you know what I just learned? That Americans throw away 25% more trash from Thanksgiving to New Year's than they do the rest of the year. That's insane. Gross. But it also makes sense. Gross. How much trash is in your house during that time period? Yeah, that's true. A lot. But that's where Blue Land comes in. Um, We love Blue Land. You've heard us talk about Blue Land before uh, because Blue Land is... On a mission. (laughs) Blue Land is on a mission to eliminate single-use plastic by reinventing cleaning essentials to be better for you and also the planet. So listen, the idea is very simple. If you haven't heard about Blue Land yet or you haven't seen it, I don't know where you've been, but um, you grab one of the beautiful forever bottles, you fill it with warm water, and then you drop in a tablet and you get cleaning. Refills start at two twenty five. dollars You don't have to buy a new plastic bottle every time you run out. It is crazy once you make this switch yeah. how you much you realize like, oh my God, how much plastic right. was I using? Like, right. what, what have we all been doing? You know? Yeah. And Blue Land is incredible because they have everything from cleaning sprays to hand soap to toilet cleaner, which we love. We love the toilet cleaner. Love the it's toilet my favorite. Yes. And laundry tablets. And all Blue Land products are made with ingredients that you can definitely feel good about. And right now, Blue Land's having the best sale of the year. So you can save and shop sustainably for your friends, family, yourself. I'm going to get it for my parents, I think. I think think that's a great idea. I I would actually like to get this as a gift. I would too. I would too. The Clean Essentials Kit would make an amazing gift because it has everything you need to get started in signature scents such as iris agave, fresh lemon, and eucalyptus mint. Plus, for a limited time, Blue Land's hand soap is getting a very festive upgrade with a beautiful chocolate box-inspired gift set with cozy scents like evergreen, winterberry, and peppermint. That's I love it. Me. I do love yeah. I do love the peppermint um Blue Land. They did that last year too. I really yeah. like it. It's really, really good. So Take advantage of the best sale of the year. Go to blueland.com slash best. You won't want to miss this. Blueland.com slash best. That's blueland.com slash best. Um, Wait, so what else is, what else did I, did we need to talk about? There's, I said there are so many things. Oh, Elon, Elon Musk. Elon Musk. Uh What's that? What's the story? With Elon? What's going on? He just kind of sees, seems like garbage. Like, he seems like a garbage person, right? <laughs> He's like a troll. He's you a know? troll. I He's think, a troll. Well, no. I mean, it, honestly, it might be worse than that. It might be, like, more that, like, Twitter is now going to be a platform to manipulate public information. Um, So yeah, he fired a lot of like the safety team at Twitter, which Twitter wasn't the safest. To begin with. A lot of the legal team, um, I guess, is gone now. And he's saying he's going to cut the Twitter workforce by 75%. And also that now there's a rumor that he's going to charge people for verified accounts. Like they'll have to pay for verified accounts, which I think for the most part, people would let their verified accounts go. Yeah, um, who cares? Yeah. I mean, cares? it doesn't, I don't know. I think it's, I think it's bizarre. But I, like it's all bizarre. Yeah. I mean, I did see that like the use of the N word increased like 500% um, on Twitter in the, in the, moments following his takeover. I don't, I just, I don't know. It's, it was making me a little melancholy and sad because like, it just, it was such a good place to just meet people and like get to know people a little bit for better or for worse. Like, you know, people that you've admired and I probably have mentioned this on the podcast before, but like my dad went to high school with Mark Hamill in Japan. Yes, we've talked about this. Yeah, and it was very cool to be able to reach out to him because my dad's no longer here and be like, hey, I just had a question about like 
something that has to do with, like, I was just wondering this, you know, and could you answer this question about what it was like going to this high school in Japan? And he was very gracious and responded to me. And so it's cool to be able to have access to things like that. And also, like, a lot of people in a lot of places rely on it for accurate news where there's, like, you know, state-sponsored or state, you know, Sponsored is like a friendly word to say for it, but a lot of countries have like state controlled news. And so Twitter was like a way for people to communicate. And I just, I don't know what it's going to be going forward. Well, we can do this. Maybe it's the time to launch our social media platform. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Um, yeah, it'll, it'll be interesting to see. And I see a lot of people are like, I'm going to be on Mastodon. I'm going to be on counter social. I'm going to wait for Jack's blue sky, which then I read this thing that was like, you know, maybe don't trust any of these things. And I'm just like, I don't know. I mean, we're all in so deep on it. You know, it's a, it's a mess. It's kind of a mess. Um, it is a mess. Speaking of Twitter, though, I do feel like I find some things on there still that I'm, like, always surprised by. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Um, we didn't talk about – this is what I – but I just saw a tweet that made me remember this. Um, Heidi Klum's Halloween costume, it's got to stop. This has to stop. You what know the what? Fuck? I respectfully disagree. I hate it. I hate – what is that – why the worm? She was a worm, and her husband it's was so a fisherman. Gross. And then, uh, but also, her- like, what a fucking bizarro! That you costume is insane. I like it because here's the thing that was annoying me this year. I saw the whole Kim Kardashian like. There was, like, a big news thing. I I can't believe that this is, like, sticking in my craw, but it is. There was a big news thing about Kim Kardashian thought that Tracy Ellis Ross's birthday party was a costume party and showed up as in full Mystique costume. And I'm like... No, you're like, you're editorializing on this. She was on her way to Diddy's Halloween party. She was dressed as Mystique. Obviously, when you're like in full movie makeup and costume, you can't do a quick change in the limo on the way over. So she went to Tracy Ellis Ross's 50, 50th birthday party in her hours long makeup and costume. So, like, I was like, my take on it was like, let's not ruin the Baba Duke ladies. You know, let's not try thunder. to besmirch let's not take her. her. Let's not take not, her thunder no. and uh, try to steal her legacy, stolen valor. You know, we all know, <laughs> we know the Baba Duke lady. Uh, she's a sitcom writer, actually. Um, who Katie I don't Dippold. know, Katie Dippold. I don't know her personally, but she accidentally showed up to like a like a grown ups wine and cheese party and dressed fully as the Baba Duke, And it was hilarious because she just took a picture of herself or had someone a picture. else took a picture. Someone else picture took a picture of her, of her looking. It's extremely, iconic. It's iconic. It's iconic. It's iconic. And so Kim had this viral moment where I'm like, no, this was intentional. She never thought that Tracy's birthday party was a costume party, whatever. <clears throat> anyway, I sort of am like of the mindset though, like you choose. In that yeah. situation, in that case, I'm like, you pick one. But why would you know she? I mean? She went super viral. She got a ton of press. But my point about Heidi Klum versus Kim Kardashian is like, Kim Kardashian like has all the resources in the world, and she made herself look like this iconic movie character, very sexy, and it's amazing. But like, she just paid for all that. It's basically like the quality of the costume from the X-Men movies. You know what For I mean? Sure. Like yes, there's no, it's 100%. she didn't have to That's put correct. any creativity in, and right. she looks amazing. So mm-hmm. there's no like gamble. For me, Heidi Klum dressing as a worm. <laughs> <That's ridiculous. laughs> it's funny. It's weird. Okay. 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 All right. She's I'm not like, you she's brought not me looking, over. She's not looking sexy in no, that worm no. costume at but all. It's just like, what do you even do? I'm just saying like, what do you even do at the party? <laughs> She takes She's, the pictures, and then what? I don't know. She said she just wants to put a smile on people's faces. It's fucking nuts. It's crazy. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's crazy. I just am like, I don't know, just uh, the practical. It's her party. You yeah. can't even, like, enjoy your party. 
I don't know. Maybe, maybe, who knows? Maybe it was more wearable. Heidi Klum knows about wearability and she knows about editorial <laughs> like better than anyone. So, you know, so maybe it w- maybe she demanded I'm, that the worm costume be made wearable. I'm actually, I'm actually obsessed with this take. <laughs> Um, two women all, both have all the resources in the world. I'll take the worm over Mystique any day. I mean, I agree. Like, just in terms of, I don't know, creativity and like, yeah, like true insanity. Yeah, the worm obviously wins <laughs> Halloween. Uh, I also was like. What's with Lizzo and Cardi B being Marge Simpson? Did any other celebrities have good costumes? Donald Faison's daughter was Oh the yeah, clueless. they Yeah, they did clueless together. That was really cute. Um I think that's really funny. I think it's really funny. The worm. <laughs> now I'm okay, now I'm on board, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, Harry was Danny Zuko, like they were all from Greece. Oh, uh, okay. I saw a lot of um, Greece this year. I guess Olivia Newton-John. That makes sense. Aww. We lost Olivia, so people were had her on their I minds. saw a really funny... Um, I saw a really funny uh, Florence Pugh outfit. Uh, it was just yeah. like all purple and carrying an Aperol spritz. Oh, my God. And you didn't dress as anything. You didn't dress oh! up. Wait, no, I wasn't going to. But then I remembered that Franzia sent me that boxed wine costume. Oh. <laughs> and so, you know, it was just like one of those like pull on over your yeah. clothing yeah. like things, like yeah. foam things. So I just put that on for trick or treating. And honestly, people loved it. <laughs> people really loved it. I didn't get a picture. I don't know why I didn't get a picture, but I just didn't. Um, yeah. But that was like, it was like a good, it was like a great last minute thing. Oh, great. Um, Kim Kardashian. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Listen, it seemed like people were having fun. I hope that people were safe. I hope there's not um, a COVID surge <laughs> because it, mm. it seemed like Halloween was back this year. So hopefully. It definitely. Hopefully, it seemed very crowded. It was crowded. And so I wore a mask when I was handing out candy because I was super social over the past little while. And I was like, I was glad I handed out candy because I was a little bummed out because this is so dumb. But I was a little bummed out because I wasn't invited to any Halloween celebrations. So, which I get, like, why would I be? I'm not, um, I'm not in my 20s and I'm not a kid. So, you know, so, but I was bummed that I didn't have anything necessarily to do that weekend. But also I had just sworn that I wasn't going to do anything for a really long time because of how many things I've recently done. Like I went to that wedding and then our friend, friend Janie Haddad had her birthday party and I went to that. And I also went to like a, like a spa day from one of our advertisers who's not advertising on today's podcast, but higher dose um, invited people that they work with for some massages and things like that. So I was like, after that week, I'm never doing anything again, but I still was a little bummed not to be invited to a Halloween party, but I wouldn't have gone, but I wanted to be invited. You know, that's like the, that's the conundrum. I get it. Yeah. I get it. I, I have to tell you something. I was invited to Heidi Klum's party. You were? Yeah. And I wanted, I wanted to go. Jen and I were going to go, but you know what? I had to, I had to call it. Yeah. I had to say, I've been like traveling, working. Yeah. Uh, I've had all of these events, like charity things and um, voting things and yeah. all the things that I've been showing up for. And honestly, I like kind of got sick again. Ugh. And it's not, and it's not coves. It's literally the the thing that like I'm out in the world again. Yeah. I mean, I wear my mask on the plane yeah. when I'm traveling, but I also was really stressed out last week when... I was traveling. I had like kind of like a stressful 
and I was and I was like crying a lot. And I think I weirdly do think that when you cry a lot, I don't know, am I crazy? I think okay, this is <laughs> now you guys get to hear a thing that I have thought for many years and I <laughs> am realizing now as I'm starting to say it out loud that it might be insane. I have always thought that like when you really fucking lose it, like I was like had really lost it, was like couldn't stop sobbing. Yeah. That it like leaves you open to getting sick. I mean, I don't think that's insane. Two things. I think that tears and like whatever comes out of your nose when you're crying is very salty and fairly caustic and so it might leave like your mucous membranes more uh more open to like being irritated by anything and also i think that probably when you know it's kind of like uh whenever you do something that's a big deal, like you finish final exams or you get over some big hump at work or whatever, and then suddenly, boom, you get sick. And I think there's something to, like, that, like, emotional release, uh, maybe just doing something to your nervous system that finally, like, I don't know, maybe your body, like, drops its guard and lets some germs sneak in. That's what I that's think. That's what I, I think. think. It's crazy. Yes, I think that is exactly what it is. Um, anyway, so that, so I like, yeah, I, so I, I told Jen that I was sorry, but that I had to <sighs> bail. And she had a really great Yanni costume, but oh, man, she is going to come with me tonight to the Glamour Women of the Year Awards. Oh, that's um, exciting. Yeah, which I'm going to be doing any minute. <laughs> I feel like I'm doing it so soon. Um, But yeah, I just, I've been feeling very exhausted and like I definitely am overwhelmed and like, uh, you know, I I do my therapy and stuff, but it's just, there's a lot. It's a lot going on and like, it's hard to be, it's hard to be, it's hard to be. It is hard to be. We're heading into that time of year where there's, so much potentially to do and every moment where you're doing something you wish that you could catch a break and every moment where there's not something to do you're probably gonna be feeling left out if my experience as a human holds as true for many of you as it does for me I alternately felt this week like oh my god I really am having a good time but I wish I was home in my pajamas I waffled between that and be- and feeling like super lonely like actually being home in my pajamas and being like this sucks <laughs> no i'm like i've been very glad to be out and about and yeah. especially like for the things that i've been able to like support and yeah show up for but also like and i just want to talk about this really quickly because i'm doing it again tonight. Like I kind of had a realization and a little bit, we were talking about this with Nora too. Yeah. But uh, like one of my super close friends and I got into like a thing, like whatever. And I was just like, I'm sorry, like, I can't, I'm not being as supportive as you want me to be in this moment of, you know, of your thing because, like, I'm fucking stretched thin and, like, I have all of these other things and, you know, and, like, I that's the conundrum, right? Like, in friendships and relationships and parenting and all of those things, it's like, how do you make sure that you have enough for yourself so that you right. don't so that you are able to show up for the people that you love and who are in your life and but then as i was like kind of like just going through it all i think i sometimes don't acknowledge the toll that emotional vulnerability that i publicly the emotional vulnerability that i publicly do yeah. And 
the abortion work and consistently talking about my own abortion at 15. Yeah. Like how that impacts me. Um, and I don't, I mean, this is like definitely a conversation for my therapist, but I'm just bringing it here because yeah. I don't know, maybe other people can sort of relate to it in their own ways. Like, it's not that I don't, it's not that I want to be a different type of person. Like, I think there is so much validity in like our podcast being what it is in yeah. the way that I built my social media in the fact that like <laughs> Raymond Padilla will tell you when he would meet people and they'd be like, but what is she really like? And he's like, honestly, she's really like what you that, see. That's it. Yeah. That's her. Um, but I do think that I need to be more sort of in tune or aware of like the threshold that I have because like last week was just too, I, I was really pushed to the fucking brink. And then yeah. I felt like I didn't have literally any support. Like I felt like I, and I didn't know, like I didn't even know though like who I wanted it from. I just wanted someone to right. like come to me. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? I didn't want to have to like, because also there's that, right? Like then it becomes the thing where you're like, because my friend was like, all you had to do was like, just tell me. And I was like, I can't. Right. <laughs> like I don't have time to even recognize it. Right. Let alone recognize that, like, I could use some support and, like, could you offer that, you know? Like, right. And so then we got into this whole thing because I was kind of a dick <laughs> about, about, like, a thing that they were going through. And, like, I just, like, didn't have, I was like, well, yeah, that sucks. Like, whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, like, it was more because I was upset because I felt like, I had been waiting for someone in my life who was close to me to like see it. Right. And I know that that's not, I know from Hoffman, like I know from the work that I've done and from therapy and blah, 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 blah. Like that's not how it actually works. Like you right. have to be communicative. Even right. the people that you're most intimate with, like don't know what's going on inside your head. Head. Yes. But I like, but like a little bit, I was like, but like, come on, like honestly, yeah. come on. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I don't know. I don't know. So it's it's it's, it's hard. Because I do sometimes challenge. I'm like, it is a challenge. Here's one, here's one thing, if I may. I think that, okay, imagine you are making like a schedule for yourself where your hours were blocked off. Like remember your school schedule. Like when, sure. you know. And imagine if you color coded everything and say that like, a workout was a was an hour block in blue mm -hmm. and anything that is emotional like emotional labor or that like takes an emotional toll or that is like emotionally something that you had to work through was red now i'm imagining imagine if your if your schedule was all blue blocks all workout blocks you would be like this is too much for my body. Like, I can't work out eight hours a day, back to back to back to back. I have to take out seven of these a day mm -hmm. to be realistic. I think a lot of times your schedule is majority red blocks. Right. And you're not seeing them that way. You're not right. seeing them as anything you have to recover from, you know, Take, take a break from, and nobody else is seeing them as that either because they're just not delineated. It's like, I'm doing this event, I'm doing this, and it's it's all for good and it's great. But like, yeah, I, I think this is a good lesson for all of us. There has to be some acknowledgement that this like, it takes it out of you the same way, not the same way, but in a way that's comparable to like, if you bounce on a trampoline for an hour, you have to sit down and drink a glass of water after. And I just think that it must be really hard, 
because it feels like something that you should do and that is good and it is, but also what what you should do sometimes is like, yeah, I guess like communicate to people like that really did a number on me or I have to rest or I have to be quiet. Right. And the the truth of the matter is, like my friend was like, it's so reductive to be like, you just have to get better at saying no. It's like, actually, that's not what I have to get better at. I'm going to fucking show up for these like, like it's, all I can do in this yeah. moment in time. Like, yeah. you know, there are 15-year-old me's in fucking 26 states Yeah, right now. So I actually, that's not what I have to get better at. But what I have right. to get better at is like making sure that like I'm supported and the people around me. But I have to tell you like, but then then the the combination of like you know a kid who like is like you only care about your charities like you know you only care about politics and your job and uh i don't think i need to tell you which kid that is anyway <laughs> i like i you know that was part of what added to like my stress last week was that yeah. um i had been going out and going out and going out for all of these different things yeah. that are important and like I need to do and whatever and uh, show up for. And then I had to go to Atlanta to work. Right. And I was actually going to go early so that I wasn't just like flying in immediately going to work, right. basically. Right. And, and, and like exhausted, you know? And I was going to take like a beat because I'd been nonstop. And then Birdie texted me, literally like packing my bag. And Birdie texted me from school, what are you doing at 3.30? And I was like, oh, actually, I'm getting picked up at 4 to go to the airport. And this is where I wasn't communicative with my own children about yeah. Yeah. that I was going to leave right. that day. Right. And that's like my bad. Yeah. <laughs> but... Anyway, then Bernie like flipped out and was texting me from school and was like, I'm sobbing hysterically. You're the worst mother. Like, you do nothing for me. You know, like, like all the things that like in this... Are not at all true. Are not at all true. In this moment, I can obviously be like, okay. You but know, at that moment. But at that moment, not only was it... I mean, I, I did a very tempered response, you know, and then like sort of... So, like just went away, you know, yeah. and uh, what is it called in DBT? Planned ignoring or something? Oh yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But what had happened was that Birdie had had a plant wanted to surprise me, mm. and wanted to take me to see my policeman at three thirty after school, and I hadn't told them that I was going. So like right. they didn't know and they thought it was going to be like a fun thing because I've been asking like, whatever, you know, I've been yeah, asking like, yeah. can we see this together? Can we go do yeah. this together? You know, whatever. And so then Bernie fl flipped out on me. That was really hard. And then I found like a much later flight at night and, and I I was like, I'll just see you at two thirty. I'll pick you up from school. You know, yeah. I'll just see you when you get out. And picked Birdie up. And, like, I, I know that, like, me changing my flight and showing up, I know that, like, there is a version where somebody is, could be, could think, like, your child threw essentially a temper tantrum and you acquiesced to right. their right. desire. But I also just want to say that, like, in in defense of my <laughs> decisions, I I changed my flight to later that same day. And for Birdie in this moment in their life, it is very important that I pick her. Right. Not always. It can't always be. I can't right. always pick her. Right. But when I can make that happen, I 
even if it's like the way in which it kind of went down is not, is antithetical to like what it's supposed to be. Right. Like we talked about it on our way to the movies where I was like, there was bad communication both ways here. Like if you had, I know you were trying to do something sweet and like have a surprise, but because of my schedule, like it would have been better if yesterday you had said to me, because then I made the decision like that morning to go to leave so that I could have more, like more time to decompress and do my wardrobe fitting, not like the morning of the shoot. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you know, but I apologized for my part of it as well. Yeah. And then we went and saw my policeman, which like I fucking loved. Oh, good. Do you think you'll see it? Do you watch movies? Yeah, I watch movies sometimes. I mean, not it's good. A ton. I liked it yeah. a lot. Yeah. I haven't been to the movies in I no. Oh my but, God, we went to the movies. It was like, to be honest, there were eight people in the whole theater. I can okay. count them. Yeah. I can like yeah. literally yeah. think yeah, of where they think were of and I can where count. They were. There were yeah. eight people <laughs> in the yeah. theater. Yeah. Um but I loved it. I thought it was really good. And I thought Harry was like really good in it as an actor. Oh, good. And Emma Corrin's like a genius. And then the other guy who I guess is from Peaky Blinders, a show I've never seen. Love Peaky Blinders. Well, then you would know this guy who's on it and in Don't Worry Darling. Nope, not Don't Worry Darling. Uh, Mr. <laughs> my Mr. My Police, Mr. Policeman, busy, come on. <laughs> I'm like just embarrassing myself. I'm just such a mom. Uh, oh my, my policeman. Uh, he's he's excellent. He was excellent. Oh, but the movie okay. itself, I was really into, and I thought Harry was so, like so talented, so good. And I know he had like sort of mixed reviews from Don't Worry, Darling. But like honestly, I don't know. Everyone needs to calm down. He's great. Uh, people, I thought people really liked Don't Worry, Darling. Yes, but I think he got sort of mixed reviews mm. in the movie. Right. No, I think the movie's good too. Wow. But I think I. I thought he was great. I think he's great in everything, I guess, is the point. Yeah. So maybe I'm not an objective. I gotcha. No, but I, but truly, I was like, I didn't, I kind of like sort of knew what the movie was. It it felt like kind of like reminiscent of like 90s British indie movies. Like those like okay. Mike Lee, like those like Mike Lee movies. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. back in the day. Anyway, yeah. I loved it. There is so much fun. Hot gay sex. (laughs) Casey. Wow. The man that you're mentioning from Peaky Blinders is um, David Dawson. Okay. Um, But he's not not a major, he's not a major Peaky Blinder. So. Oh, I just like, I just IMDb'd, you know? Yeah. If you're a Peaky Blinders fan, uh hit me up about who he plays but there the, listen that's a big ensemble show and it's not your kind of show I don't think so it doesn't surprise there's a lot of you know there's a lot of killings in it not interested <laughs> um but the but you liked it oh my god I love but like the hot gay sex was so funny because Bertie had already seen the movie yeah and so when it was like happening Bertie just curled into a ball uh. <laughs> <laughs> like did not want to watch at the same time as me which is like so cute and funny and aware and, and I normal. appreciated. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and no normal, child wants please. to watch that with their parents. Uh, but it was real hot. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. Oh my so gosh. anyway, so then, and then from there, went back, dropped Bird off. The car was already there waiting for yeah. me to take me to the airport. My flight was fucking delayed. Blech. Like, Mm. you know, it was just like a whole thing. And then I got into a fight with my friend for being a dick. So Mm. it was just like a confluence of unfortunate, as Lemony Snicket would say. Yeah. It was a series of unfortunate events. We're all just like, like if toothpaste tubes had holes poked in them, just our toothpaste is leaking everywhere, you know? It's true. We're being squeezed. The toothpaste is coming out of the wrong place. It's yeah. getting on to other people who are also leaky toothpaste tubes. 
And it's not not the same with Matt and I. Like, the kids' schedules, I pretty much know. Um, and they're adults. And, uh, but, like, I never know Matt's schedule. And, uh, and I don't have, like, a regular day-in, day-out schedule. But I guess when I do, I, because we're leading such, like, independent, isolated lives, like, sometimes you forget, like, I didn't, I didn't say anything about that I'm doing this thing or whatever, you know? Like, I didn't mention that I'm going to this place and it's out of the ordinary or whatever. So, so many times it's like, you know, Matt just had a thing where his schedule changed at work and he was like, and I worked it out so that, like, the day that you're doing the podcast, I'm always working so that I won't be around, blah, blah, blah. Since that happened, like, Two months ago, he's had every day off, every podcast day. <laughs> so I'm like, oh my god, that's what so about annoying. that thing? You know, and he's like, I worked it so that I ha- won't be, you know, working late at night two nights in a row because I know that sucks. And like, you know, but it hasn't worked out, and because that's just the way it is. Everybody has stuff, and you have to like all of this is a cooperative experience, whether it's in a workplace, in a family, whatever. And like sometimes it just doesn't fucking go your way, or sometimes there's like poor communication, and you know, and it sets off this like chain of events that affects other people, and it kind of sucks. And it's weird, right? Because we've all become accustomed to being, like, a little on our own and a little lonely in a lot of ways, even when we have friends and family and people around us. And then when we're, like, forced to confront it, it can get a little messy. So that sucks. I'm sorry that you didn't feel supported after, you know, after almost dying last week. And that was also, I have to say, that was also, like, part of it, too. Like, I was kind of traumatized by that. Yeah, of Truly. course you were. Like you told well, it like a funny story, but I know, but that's how she that's how she processes everything in her life. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I was like very like it was wild. Yeah. Um Yeah, I don't know, man. Yeah. And you're still shaking <sighs> up a little bit. I just feel like I yeah, I mean, yes. I guess part of what's hard is not knowing what the best version of like decompressing is, like what it is that, you know, so frequently I think people are like, you need to just tell, you know, what do you need? It's hard when you don't exactly know, like that's the hardest part. Right. You know, like when you don't really know what you need for support. Right. And you're like, it would be nice if... I don't know what. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I think it's really hard and, you know, it's something that I've been trying to work on, but in your position, I just think it's really hard. I think, like, we all need to take a realistic accounting of what we're doing in our lives. Like, uh, here's a good example. When I worked at Watch What Happens Live, I felt so overwhelmed at times because it was just one of those jobs that for me, for my position in that job, I could easily wake up at eight o'clock in the morning, immediately start working on that, you know, that show Mm -hmm. and work all day long up until, you know, midnight, like when we got out. Yeah. So eight in the morning till midnight, easily. And I remember uh, this, you know, this guy that you know, everybody knows him, everybody that that listens to Andy's radio station, John Hill, came to work on the show eventually, and he was feeling the same way. Like, he was like, <laughs> this is like one of these conversations, Hollywood break, that you you have probably had yourself, where he was like, I just have such a like I have a stomach ache and I feel so overwhelmed and you know and he was I was like well why do you have a stomach ache and he was like I guess I mean I haven't been to the bathroom and I was like John you're allowed to poop 
Like you're, that's a human function that most people have to do every, you're allowed to go to the bathroom and go poop. And, but like, how many times have you been on a job where you've avoided pooping because you were like, I don't have time to get there. I'm going to have to take all this whole costume off. I'm going to be gone for 10 minutes. People are going to be looking for me the whole time. You know, it reminded me uh, also again of when I worked at one show (laughs) And the host yelled into the bathroom for me, like looking for me. And I was like, I'm me? changing. Was it me, guys? No, it, was me. it wasn't. It I'm wasn't. Kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I was like, I'm changing my tampon. Like, <laughs> like, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? And so then I just realized that I had to take a realistic accounting of like what my day and what my life was. And when I looked at it, I was like, a lot of these things I'm letting little little snips and snatches like bleed into, but I have to work it out. Like how long does it realistically take to do this task? And like, if all goes well, is it two hours? And if there's like 10 disasters while I'm doing it, is it four hours? I need to block off two to four hours for myself to do this. But then I also have to like work in time to eat and work in time to poop and work in time to do nothing and work in time to like do whatever it is you have to do to make yourself be able to survive it. And in your position, like it's really hard, right? Because the more things are going well, honestly, better, the harder it is to get control of it, you know? And when things are going, quote unquote, not as well, and you have less to do, then in a lot of ways, sometimes that's better because you have a minute to think about, well, shit, like I need to talk to someone. I need to call someone and, and just like, you know, you don't even necessarily need to reach out to someone and say like, these, this is my list of grievances and things that are bothering me. Cause that's not how you are. But sometimes you just need to talk to someone yes. with no purpose. That's right. You, but you know? also, and also I was at a point too, where I was like, I was so exhausted. I couldn't, I didn't even want to do that. Like I yeah. couldn't even talk. Yeah, you couldn't. Yeah. Which is why I ended up being like a dick. You know what right. I mean? In my right. response. Like, right. because it wasn't like, I had passed the point of like, yeah, taking care of myself. You know, yeah. I was just like spent. I think that like, right. Like we're all, all of us juggling so many things all of the time. And it is a real, it's a real trick. Yeah. And it's not like you can be reductive and say it's about saying no, but it's not necessarily. No. It's, I, I think it's more like, and I do, I mean, do we sometimes have to say no to things? Yes. And you, you did, you just said like you missed seeing Heidi Klum in the worm costume and on purpose, uh, you know, that was, that was in, well, you didn't know she was going to be a worm. That was no, like a big I reveal. Mean, but like, you know, getting invited to Heidi Klum's Halloween party, that's pretty cool. And you said no, because you felt like you didn't have the bandwidth. And so that's Well, I something- had, by the way, to be clear, I did say yes. But then I realized. <laughs> but then you I did ha- realize yeah, like. Then- at some point in the last couple of days, I was like, oh, there's no fucking way that I'm, I can do you that. You pulled the like, plug I'm, on it. Yeah. yeah. My sinus still hurts. Like, I'm still yeah. having, like, yeah. weird sinuses. Yeah. Um, but I think it's about, like, kind of about, for for me, in my experience, just having, like, a realistic accounting. Because that's, like, well, I think it's an ADD thing, too, because I notice it with my family members. You know the saying, like, just because you can doesn't mean you should. I just like, text, literally texted that to Jen this morning <laughs> about something else. But yes, of course I know but that saying. just because there's eight hours in a yeah. day doesn't yeah. mean you need to fill all eight hours with, like, productive things for other people or 24 hours in a day. You know what I mean? Like, it's... Mm-hmm. It is very weird. And like in a weird way, and again, like this is microdosing talking, it reminds me of like the situation that entertainment is in. When we were little kids, when I was a little kid, there were literally three TV stations. Mm-hmm. That's and correct. they each had programming every night from 8 to 11. 
Mm-hmm. So there were like, when I was a little kid, there was like a possibility of nine to 18 shows on television any mm-hmm. given night. That was it. That was it for the whole entire country. The whole entire United States could watch anywhere from nine to 18 shows, depending on whether they were an hour long or a half yes. hour long. Right Now, because entertainment is nonlinear and there are infinite amount of platforms and those platforms don't go by our blocks, mm-hmm. they just put whatever on them, there's infinite amount of programming. You know, you, they can add as much as they can afford. Totally. And they can, the same with this podcast. You know, this podcast doesn't come on on Wednesday morning. And if you catch it, you catch it. And if you miss it, you miss it. It's right. just out there, layered on top of all the other millions and billions of podcasts. And so I think that, you know, we're living in this like nonlinear world where everything is like a possibility. And you can be doing way too many things in your life, but we still have, like, linear time. Like, linear time still governs, like, our days and our lives. And I just, it's so hard because you're not in a point in your life right now where you're able to give much of that time to even figuring out what you need, you know? And again, it's like when it's good, you know, which is like, that's got to be such a (sighs) mindfuck, you know? The better it is, the worse it is for you to be like, can I poop, you know? Oh, I can always, I can always poop. (laughs) You can always poop. You know what I mean? But like, to your point, like, you can always poop. But how many times were like we holding a show so that you could poop? Because that's how tightly everything is scheduled. That's not built into the the calendar, the production calendar of a no, day. No, but in the same way that I scheduled my pregnancy with Cricket around <laughs> my television show uh, yeah. schedule, I always knew like I had to poop before the yeah. show. Just made it happen. We're not building in a lot of time to be human, I no, think. No, that's, I, not, yes, I think that's exactly right. And we're not also building in a lot of allowance for people mm-hmm. to be human. I also I also do think that the and this is what Jen and I were like kind of talking about this morning, like the quiet spaces are where the good shit shows up, where yeah. you where you find the ideas, where you like are able to have real clarity about what's next and yes. you know and how it's what it's going to look what it could look like you yeah. know it's it is in those moments that you have to really be able to have them if you want to be productive at all right right and that well, or creative or you know like any of it any of it People always say, like, it's so quirky. People are always like, I don't know why, but I think of the best ideas when I'm in the shower. And I'm like, yeah, obviously, the TV is not on. You're not on your phone. No one's fucking bothering you. You have 15 minutes to yourself. You know, um, when I was a kid, I constantly was locking myself in the one bathroom in the house because I just liked to have ideas. And that was my most creative spot was on the bathroom rug. You know, um, I'm really good uh, when I'm working out. You know, I get really good ideas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's the same thing. Like your blood's flowing, and like you might be listening to like the leader of the workout, but you're not on your phone. You're not watching a show. You're not reading the internet. You're not. You know, you're just in the moment, and and you're kind of on autopilot. Same with you know, people think really well or talk really well when they're driving. And it's because you have like narrowed your distractions, but it's, it's really hard. And we have a ton of distractions right now. Um, Oh, so many fucking distractions. Yeah. Element. Element. Replenish your electrolytes. Is that good? That was very Jack Black. Okay, can I tell you something that happened for real when I was um, in... Oh, wait, you know this. I texted you. Yes. So, guys, when I was working in Atlanta, I went to eat dinner at a restaurant by myself, like, the first night I got in. Yeah. 
And a guy like passed out at the restaurant, not from drinking or anything. Like, I guess he just was having whatever. I, who knows? I don't know what was happening. Yeah. But this woman who was sitting near me went inside to like check on this guy and then came back and was like, well, I guess it, I think it's just electrolytes. He just needs electrolytes. And I was like, how do I not have an element on me? <laughs> I was texting Casey and I'm like, of all the times where I don't have an element because I had, I had had it. it. Yeah. earlier in the day when I was on the airplane. For because yourself. When, yes, because whenever I fly, I always replenish my electrolytes. I don't drink on airplanes, guys. Rarely, rarely, um, you know, because yeah. you get, you don't, I don't want to lose my electrolytes. I feel like they get sucked out of you as soon as you, as soon as that plane goes over 10,000 feet. It's like you can right. use portable electronic devices and also your electrolytes are depleted. So, well, um, obviously it's very important to replenish your electrolytes, whether you're in the air or on the the ground in a restaurant anywhere because like winter's coming it's the v- most drying time of the year it we're is all the most just dry drying time of the year but also i love element because it's everything that you need and nothing that you don't a lot of salt no sugar it's a science backed electrolyte ratio a thousand milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, 60 milligrams of magnesium. There's no junk, no sugar, no coloring, no artificial ingredients, no gluten, no fillers. It's formulated to help anyone. Because electrolytes facilitate hundreds of your bodily functions. Uh, yes. Your nerve impulses, your hormone regulation, yes. nutrient absorption, yes. fluid balance. You need it. Yeah, that's 100% correct. A hundred correct. Guys, you're going to need to get on this train, especially heading into the holidays. Maybe you're going to have a little bit more to drink. Maybe you're going to more parties. Maybe you're going to need to replenish those electrolytes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe you're going to be hitting the gym more because you're making a promise to yourself that this is going to be a healthy holiday season. <laughs> and right now, Element is offering our listeners a free sample pack with any order. That's eight single serving packs free with any element order. It's a great way to try all eight flavors or you can share it with someone who needs it. Like if I had had an extra one on me, I would have just thrown it at that man. (laughs) No, I wouldn't. I would have gone over to his table and mixed it it up for him. Yeah. Anyway, guys, get yours at drinklmnt.com slash best. This deal is only available through our special link. You must go to drinklmnt.com slash best. Also, one another reason why I love Element, they offer a no questions asked refund. Try it totally risk-free. If it's like, this isn't for me, they will just give you your money back. No questions asked. You got nothing to lose. Try it. You know what I made sure Cricket had yesterday? <laughs> Her Haya. Her Haya vitamins. Yeah. Because I was like, you're going to be out and about. It's cold. Having some candy. There's a lot of people around. There's a lot of candy. Doesn't contain a lot of vitamins. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> and I need you to, I need you to be healthy. Yeah. And... I that's I love high vitamins. I am a person who made the mistake of children's gummy vitamins early days when I was a new mom many many years ago. Right. Um, but Haya came along and they're like, "There's a better way to do this, guys." Haya is made with zero sugar, zero gummy junk, but it tastes great, and even my little picky eater likes it. Haya fills in the most common gaps in modern children's diets to provide the full body nourishment our kids need with a very yummy taste that they love. We love it. It's got vitamins D, B12, C, zinc, folate, and many others to help support immunity and energy and brain function, mood, concentration, teeth, bones, and more. Everything you want from a vitamin, Yeah, basically. It's made from a blend of 12 organic fruits and veggies. They're pressed. So, you know, it's not like, it's not just coming from nowhere. It's coming from fruits and veggies. No, it's great. We are obsessed with it. I take them sometimes too. (laughs) It's designed for kids of all ages and sent straight to my door. So I don't even have to worry about it when I'm like out at the grocery store or ordering. Like, you know what I mean? It's just, it's showing up. I love it. And there's a little bottle. Again, we love a reusable moment. Yes. 
it comes with this little bottle that you can like the kids decorate, decorate with, with stickers, stickers and they're really cute. And then that's their like little vitamin bottle and they have it and then you just refill it. Anyway, I highly recommend you guys getting on board with Haya Vitamins. Uh, we've worked out a special deal with Haya for their best-selling children's vitamin. Uh, receive 50% off your first order. To claim the deal, you must go to HayaHealth.com slash busy. This deal, not available on the regular website. Go to H-I-Y-A-H-E-A-L-T-H dot com slash busy and get your kids the full body nourishment that they need to grow into healthy adults. Also, by the way, you know what we do want to talk about what I forgot? Speaking of distractions. What the fuck with like Paul Pelosi being attacked in his home and then like all these fucking Republicans like lolling at the Halloween costumes of like, what has happened? What is happening? I think someone once said that a lot of these folks are deplorable. <laughs> and uh, she wasn't wrong. She wasn't wrong. It's just, it's disgusting. I mean, not to say nothing of like the fucking Nazi costumes that apparently people were wearing slash. Right. Uh, what is that account I follow on Instagram? Like something about a president, like not, not, what is it? I don't know. It's a good one. But she posted, by the way, I don't even know if it's a she. I think it is. She posted uh, these kids like in jail outfits and blackface, which is like literally insane. A girl has no president. That's why I think she's a girl. Okay. Because it's literally in the name of her handle. Right. And I believe that is a reference to Arya Stark in Game of Thrones. I believe. Oh, interesting. Yeah, she posted these kids' uh, children. Fucking disgusting. Who, like, little are kids were... No, these are teenagers. Okay. And they're in blackface. Like, and it's not... I mean, it's... And then there's, like, one of the friends is, like, an office. I mean, it's fucking disgusting. And some... A woman at a store... I think is like confronting them. And she's like, this isn't, this isn't okay. Like you can't do, this isn't okay. Whatever. Um, I just have to say, like I am, uh, I don't know. It's just, I, I just don't even know. I don't even know what to say about this shit anymore why people are so gross. I mean, I will say, listen, in good news, Lula yes. in Brazil won. Yes. They, they... A turn away from fascism. A turn away from fascism in, in the world, which is great because we've seen a few turns toward... In yes. many places, like Italy and, I mean, even Sweden, they had that very conservative um, person that is now in power there, yeah. I think. It's, I mean, basically fascist. Fascist. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, <sighs> and, Bol and Bolsonaro, uh, who was like Trump's guy in Brazil, uh, actually said he would accept the results of the election, which is like I'm cautiously optimistic about. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think it's, you know, well, here's what I'll say. We have yeah. seen this situation in Ukraine where people were like, Russia's going to defeat Ukraine like inside of five minutes. And they mm -hmm. have fought and held on to their country so far, knock on wood. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, let's not sugarcoat it, w not without suffering great and needless losses uh, just because the whim of, of Vladimir Putin. But they have fought and they have held on to their country. Uh, this situation in Brazil um, is hopeful. And so 
the situation in Iran with so women hopeful. just saying like, you know, we're taking to the streets it's and done. like literally. Yeah, they're like, we're not doing it anymore. We're not doing it anymore. And like Whew. this has been going on for years. People have been fighting this regime in Iran and it it took years to boil over to the point where everybody was out in the streets and like it's, honestly risking their own lives. I mean, like, very much I mean, so. yes. So. And obviously many young people have been killed. Many young people, many, many uh, people who have been fighting this fight for a long time have been killed. And, uh, <sighs> but it just makes me think like, you know, these are people that are like fighting for their fucking lives and they're doing it. And that is what it takes sometimes. There is never 100% balance and harmony anywhere. Yeah. And when things get so out of balance, you know, you just hope that the people that are on the side of right have the strength and the numbers to sort of rise up and and fight to make things more right. Right. And, and, you, know, and you know, like we say this a lot, like... We know we have the, because thank you, Shantira. We love you. We miss you. Like, we know we have the numbers for good, right? Mm -hmm. And then I get bummed out because we don't have the money. We don't right. have, we're not the billionaires. We don't, we're not Elon Musk. We're not buying Twitter. You and know what also, I mean? And it's like, also not just a case of money. It's a case of like, there have been times when people who I think would be on the side of good have fallen asleep at the wheel and been, you know, apathetic when it came to local elections, when judges were being installed, when local leaders were being elected who then, you know, you're like, it's not a big deal. Like, what's the difference between these two guys? Oh, the difference is that, like, one person is going to uphold democracy locally and one person is going to suppress the vote and make it difficult for people to vote in their best interest. They're going to gerrymander districts and make it impossible. They're going to make it so that land has more representation than people do. And, or businesses. Or businesses. And so, like, we just can never, never, never stop paying attention again. I mean, I hope that that's, like, a thing that we all have learned, right? Like, I do hope, I'm literally, I'd written this whole speech for tonight for my yeah. Glamour Women of the Year award and then they like cut it down to like a hundred words. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> but that's fine. But like in my in my speech, I was saying, you know, I, I'm sure that many people in, the, in this room were raised as I was thinking that Roe was settled law. Yeah. And that this would never happen. And I, you know, we saw it a year ago when we were talking to you guys on this very podcast where I was like, it's happening. It's happening. And Alexis McGill Johnson from Planned Parenthood, the president of Planned Parenthood was saying what we're seeing is a real disconnect between the fact that we know that this is about to happen and people believing that it's about to happen. Right. You know, I, I think a lot of people didn't show up for lots of these things because, you know, by design maybe, but also we want to believe things sometimes, yeah. you know, and we yeah. want to believe in the, in, it's the same reason why like those bros, those white nationalists and shit get like, uh, radicalized, right? Like they're right. like, I was told a thing since birth that right. I have the right to <laughs> whatever. That I can Whenever be that whatever. I can be. Yeah. And, and look at this. I'm not that. And I right. have nothing. And I want my shit. And it's like these people's fault and these people's fault and these right. people's fault. Whatever. Like a little bit. Like I was told since birth that I had equality. Right. We were told since birth that we can do anything that we are equal citizens, that that was settled and it was fought for and won. And guess the fuck what? Not so much. My point just is that like those white nationalists really show up. You know what I mean? 
Yeah. We just they have to like show up. They we organize. also have to yes, we also have to continue to show up and organize. They always and have the same little costumes on, whether it's khakis and tiki torches or scary masks, which suddenly they're all very well able to breathe through. Um, oh yeah, they got to because they don't want to get fired from their fucking jobs. Right. So, you know, they really they really do show up and, you know, and they they see the value in, in like, making a show of strength. Yep, that's right. And, you know, and trying to intimidate and make people feel fearful. And, like, listen, I get it. Like, it has been made fucking hard for people to vote in certain places, and mm-hmm. we're not given a day off of work to vote. And so so when I said asleep at the wheel, like it's wild that we don't have a holiday for voting now. It's wild that not every single place has mail-in voting. And that that's made or early voting and that that's made more difficult. But people are trying now. So we have to like fight to keep those things in fucking place so that we can vote. Because they know it. They know when they make it hard for us to vote, that's the only way that they win. They that's know right. it. So they know they're... that when they disenfranchise and they gerrymander and they do all of the fucking stupid tricks. You know, I have a friend. Okay. I have a friend. I have actually a couple friends. I actually know multiple people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to say this. like, So that if any of them happen to be listening, they know. But this is actually true. I actually yeah. have multiple people in my life whose dads are were or maybe still are well one of them has passed away um but shady businessmen and yeah. by shady businessmen i mean that these are guys who were like never broke a law right never broke a law but would like find whatever loophole fucking thing blah, de, blah, de, blah, would go to their, like, these conference. There used to, I don't know if they still exist, but I remember my one friend many, many years ago. I'm like, I don't even understand. Because one of my friends, totally unrelated to another one of my friends, like, the dads knew each other. And I was like, how the fuck do these guys know right. each other? Right. And then it turns out it was, like, through some fucking shady businessman convention thing that they would yes. go to. Like, and they, you know... They prided themselves on being above board, never yeah. broke a law. But what right. they would do would use the laws in the worst way possible to their advantage right. and fuck over workers, fuck over people, you know, whatever, yeah. so that they would have the most tax breaks, the most whatever, be right. able to like make this, make this money. Right. Make their money. Right. And I feel like that's what the Republicans are just like shady business men, like, like your friend's dad. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. They're just your friend's dad who's a shady businessman. They're going to take do, advantage of and, every and loophole. Do they and, believe, like, I don't even think no. some of these motherfuckers believe in like half of the shit they say. They're no. just like, they're, it's a, it's at this point, it's a, it's a, like an equation that they feel like they've solved yes. and so they're going to hit all of the things on the equation and then sometimes like a new equation comes along and they're like oh we got to up it yeah. we got to add 10 so because okay so we now know they they don't believe what they say because Herschel Walker would be forced to drop out of his race in <laughs> Georgia if if the they, Herschel Walker of it I mean he that guy cannot win right I don't know I don't know. That depends on Georgia, and it depends on people fucking fighting for their right to vote against Herschel Walker, because I know that Georgia is not going to make it easy for people to fucking vote for Raphael Warnock. It's, I mean, but the fact that hardly any Republican has denounced the the Multiple women who have come forward... (laughs) I mean, their- n- that nobody's denounced Herschel Walker's obvious strong belief in a, a woman's right to choose, obviously believes strongly and has taken advantage of and benefited for sure from, from women 
deciding not to carry his children. Uh, the fact that hardly any Republicans have denounced the disgusting remarks of their colleagues on the attack on Paul Pelosi, you know that they don't fucking believe a, a fuck. word that they're saying. Mm-mm. It just, it like, and pointing out the hypocrisy is just like, it's just a waste of time. It's just a waste of time. Oh, I totally agree with that. Like the hypocrisy, like they don't give, no one cares. Like it's not, yeah, that's not even a thing. But like, and that's so disturbing, Yeah, you know? It's the greatest scam that anyone's ever pulled because the fact that <laughs> people are like, the fact that non-wealthy people are willing to vote against their own best interests time and time again, just based on these grievances that mm. don't affect them one way or the other. No one has ever been harmed by gay marriage. No one has ever been harmed by a drag queen story hour no one oh my god wait i wanted to talk about that did you see that fucking rad woman yes she was amazing you guys if you have not seen this video highly recommend seeking it out it was a woman speaking up at like a local uh city council meeting where they were trying to ban what were they doing what was it probably drag queen story hour drag drag queen i don't know something and she goes fucking off. And she's so full of rage. This is what I'm saying. Like, I'm like actually, I'm post rage now. Yeah. I'm not rageful at all yeah. about any of it. And yeah. I remember being many years ago, a few years, several years ago now, I remember being like shaking with rage. Yeah. Because I do think when you first, and maybe some of you are there, and that's like great. We need you there. We do. <laughs> Like we need you all of the places, all of the emotions. We just need you engaged. I think that sometimes like the rage part though, uh, at least I found, um, it's not, well, it's not sustainable, right? but, but also it, um, you know, the other side loves to use it. You have to focus it. You have to focus it. You have to focus it. But like, so she's going literally fucking off. Yeah. at this city council meeting about like the, you know, the, yeah, the hypocrisy that she had been, you know, like I've never been harmed by like uh, anyone at a drag show, but I have been molested at church twice. Right. Like fucking incredible. Intense. But a this really is a really good th- example of focused rage. Focused she had rage, a good point. A great fucking point. But also that's the other thing that like, I kind of started talking about, which is like, you know, I think about my friend Sarah in South Carolina, like you continue to like explain in ways, in in ways loud and quiet and forceful and whatever, Um, you know, you have to continue. I feel like people who are oppressed, like obviously black and brown people in this country, indigenous people in this country, and yes, women in this country, like we keep saying these, like, the, these are the things. These are the things. These are the things. I have to re-traumatize myself. I have to stand here on this stage right. in front of 250 people and right. tell you again about what happened when I was 15 years old and how I had an abortion and, like, blah, 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 blah. And it does, I'm, I know, I, this is, it feels sometimes like it doesn't fucking matter because they're just, on their, they're doing their equation, these right. Repu- these horrible Republicans, and they literally don't fucking care. Right. But I guess the trick, the trick is knowing that it is making inroads and making a difference. Right. Right? I don't know. Well, I think it, I think it does. I think the more people are able to speak up and not everyone is able to for whatever reason. So we can't. For sure. You know. By the way, you know that. Like I have, I never feel any way about anyone who's like. Yes. Not, uh, isn't ready or willing to like talk about their own trauma publicly. Right. Like. Right. There's nothing that says you have to. Right. Oh my God. 
Okay, and remi- I got to loop back around to this. So just you continue and then just remind just me say, about this. But the more people who feel like they are able, that brings other people who may not be able to a point where they're like, whether they're sharing about it or, you know, just voting on it or whatever, like the more people who are able to speak with some authority and some experience – the more they're able to bring people around to recognizing the reality and the humanity of the situation, I think it does do good. I think it does do good. I I do. I also think what my realization was a a while back is that it's not going to change those people, the uh, those politicians, those like these Republicans and the people that have, for whatever reason, their agenda is their agenda. And I don't understand it. I don't know it to what end. Like who fucking knows what the changes that can be incrementally made by continuing to talk and like share stories and whether you do it like publicly or you do it, you know, in a, small, safe space, whether it's not even sharing your own trauma, but like engaging a friend or a family member in a complicated, nuanced conversation about some of these things. Like, however you do, you know, however you do it, like that's where the shift happens. And that's where, like when I was, I commented on that, a girl has no president post with those children and that, the blackface costumes are fucking disgusting because, and we've talked about it on the show, like I really hate it when I hear people say that this is like the last dying grasp of white, whatever. And we've we talked about stop. this on here. Yeah, we, People have to stop because they're making new ones. And the, and the way that we stop that is like by stopping that, like <laughs> by right. getting by getting involved and getting in there and like, as parents, as people in the community, like that woman who posted the TikTok or whatever it was of of this woman confronting these kids in a store right. and saying like, your parents let you out of the house. Like, this is not acceptable. This is not okay. You cannot do that um, right. by punching a Nazi. Uh, you know, we, right. but also this idea that like we have, that we publicly owe our, to put ourselves out there if we're not ready my heart was so broken yesterday because, you know, one of Birdie's favorite shows is the um, Heart Stopper. Yeah. Did you see Kit Connor, little Kit Connor? Yeah. It made yeah. me so sad. The The story is basically, I think that pe- fans maybe or people wondered it, ab- about his sexuality. Listen, you know, here's where I'm going to just say, I think that, representation is very important, right? And I am, as an actor and a person who takes on roles. Yeah. (laughs) Like, I do agree with that there should be, like, real representation for people who, you know, are in the LGBTQIA community, who are trans, um in television and movies, like especially when you're telling those stories, it's very important. But I also think that being, oh my gosh, now I'm going to use the word binary. Um, I also think that being like very black and white about that in and of itself is inherently not a great move either. Right. Because... Because when a person decides to come out, whatever, you know, what what their sexuality is or, you know, or even like gender issues, you know, some, like, um, like those things are, I mean, I think those things can be fluid, right? Yes. And also it doesn't. I don't think that it necessarily has to be public, like for public consumption, people's private lives. Right. Mine so he, is. So I'm this, like mine. Mine is yes. like I very much put you mine chose. out. Yeah, you. Put but it I out made there. that choice, and I am friends with. I'm very good friends with some actors who choose to not, right. and it's their it's their choice, and they don't want that piece. 
Yeah, of whether it. they're straight or bisexual or, or gay, gay, I know or, people that like you would never know that they're in any relationship whatsoever just because they're so super private about it, which is their right. This in this case, this young man, I guess, was he's accused 18. Of, queer baiting. He was accused of queer baiting because people assumed that he was a straight actor playing a queer role. And so then And he I, had it was like after the Pride Parade, I think. Is right. what the, the story that Bertie told me and let's just be honest, yeah. I got all my news from Bertie. Bertie's the authority on this. Um is that he had gone to the Pride I mean the show is a queer show. Yeah. Um there's also like there's a trans girl on the show. The other kid, Joe Locke, on the show is op- like very openly gay. Yeah. Um, wait, is that his character's name or his real name? It might be his character's name. Know. Let me look it up. Yeah. Uh, but, and there's another character on the show who is also, who's an actor, a young British actor who is also openly gay. Yeah. Um, it's a great show. I love it. I love yeah, the show. Yeah, everybody loved it. Oh yeah, it is Joe Locke. Thank God. <laughs> it's not the character's name. Um, so after, so they did a pride parade, the kids mm-hmm. in London, they did the London pride parade and, um, and Kit Connor like had the, ha- put a rainbow on his face or something. And then was yeah. like dancing on the float that they were all on. Yeah. And I guess there were like a lot of, well, first of all, we know like, I mean, British tabloids and stuff can be yeah. harsh, Are you rough. know? Yeah. And he's, young. He's a young person, a teenager. And there were lots of people that were like, he's never talked about his sexuality. And like, he's just like straight and he's queer beating. And he's just like, and like, he felt very attacked and he left Twitter. Like he signed off and it's been about a month. And, uh, and then he came back on Twitter yesterday. And this is like a kid who's been acting since he was very young. Yeah. He's in the, um, Birdie's other favorite movie, Rocket Man, the Elton John movie. What's oh, that I love movie that called? movie. Rocket Man. Rocket Man. It's great. He plays a very young Elton John. Uh, and he came back on um, Twitter and he just wrote, back for a minute, I'm by. Congrats for forcing an 18-year-old to out himself. I think some of you missed the point of the show. Bye. Right. Right. Oh, it's it's really hard, right? Because we're fighting for all of these things that are right and standing up for all of these things that are right. Like representation is important and like queer baiting is sometimes an issue. But again, like we were just talking about giving someone the space and grace and time to be human and to say something in their own And also, as, Harry, as our Harry Styles has said, he's like, I'm not ever going to say. Right. I'm never commenting on it. Right. Right. And like, okay. Right. Right. And look, I know that like, again... And by the way, people are going to continue to make assumptions until he is holding hands with someone who's not Olivia Wilde in public. You know what I mean? Like, people are always going to make assumptions. Well, sure. But, like, also, I just feel like... I don't know. I feel like that's, like, it's the piece of, like where we're at culturally, where we think we deserve to know everything about everyone all the time. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. And then and then if we don't, like, if we're not getting it, like, people get crazy. Right. And they're and, so, like, how people were, like, fixated, some people online, some yeah. people online were, like, fixated about whether Mark and I were together separated. Yes. It's yes. like, guess what? fucking tell you when I want to tell you what's going on. And like, also, like, people were speculating before I think even you guys knew. You know what I mean? Like, No, no, no. I don't think they were, well, but, like, but, like, it doesn't even matter. I mean, that part doesn't even matter. It's, like, yeah, if I had shared with just my closest friends and my family and then somebody found out for, like, why does it have, like, why can't you respect right. people's desire to 
take their time with things. Right. You know what I mean? And like right. when they're ready to, and maybe they'll, maybe they'll never be, Mark and I did talk about it for a minute. I was like, do we, maybe we never tell anyone. Pub- <laughs> maybe we just never say it publicly. Well, that's what I'm saying. When I'm saying like, I, I think you guys knew that like your relationship had reached the conclusion of, but I don't think you guys knew how you were going to handle it. And people were like, I saw Mark eating at a restaurant with not busy and blah, blah, blah. And like, oh, right. Telling, that was by the way, his messages. friend who's a lesbian, just FYI. <laughs> But like people sending messages to me being like, FYI, like I just saw Mark and, and I'm oh, like, I know, I know. Don't fucking That's message like, me about no, it. Like no. it's, but it's bizarre. Don't message me about anything about busy. By the yeah, way. please, please don't. But like, cause like it's weird. Casey hates it. <laughs> she really hates it. But, but well, like, it just, I, it just puts I'm me just, in a weird position. Like yeah, what the fuck I am know. I supposed to say about it? Nothing. You know? Um, but I also just feel like, especially with this kid, Kit Connor. And I, I, it's complicated, right? And like, I've read really, I've read really good think pieces from, from queer writers and gay writers. I've talked to my own kid who's queer about it. And, and I have my own, and as an actor, by the way, I have my own fucking feelings about it. Right. Which is like, I don't think that everyone is, um, owed, access to everyone right. to every actor's personal life and history if right. actors choose to do that that's great i think that there's benefit to be had from people being vocally out and publicly out i think that that's great i think that normalizing a lot of conversations around all kinds of things is amazing and i also acknowledge it's not for everyone It's not for everyone because even this just goes back again to what I was like talking about earlier. It's not for everyone to be like, yeah, actually I was sexually assaulted when I was this age. Actually, I had an abortion when I was this age. Like that is, there's a line on Taylor's new album. You know, I fucking love her. (laughs) You know, I love her. She announced her tour today, guys. You better believe it. There's a line on the album that's essentially... Okay. Hold on, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to read it. I'm going to read the lyrics okay. so I get it right, read guys. Because I don't have it memorized. Shocking, I know. <laughs> How can that be? I think it's to her her, her boyfriend. Uh, and the voices that implore, you should be doing more. To you, I can admit that I'm just too soft for all of it. They said the end is coming. Everyone's up to something. I find myself running home to your sweet nothings. And like, I think... That that's really, honestly, that's like a very intimate admission in a song. Mm -hmm. Like, because I've thought that too about Taylor Swift. Like, she should be doing more. She should be doing more. Right. And like, the truth is, that's not for me to fucking say. Because it does take emotional tolls on performers and people who are out in the public to do these things and to talk about and this is the way that my brain works right right like even like last week when I was like at my like just sobbing 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 I'm like but I can't stop thinking about the 15 year olds in the 26 states that currently you know I can't stop thinking about the women my age carrying dead fetuses for three weeks who aren't able to go to another state because for any number of reasons right um you know my brain is like the emotional toll that it takes on me is fucking nothing in comparison to like what other people are going through right now. Therefore, I like will push myself further and further and further. Right. But but I also can respect boundaries. I can respect a person who has boundaries. <laughs> I'm just not one of them. Right, right. Well, I think you said something really smart. You said, we don't have the right to know a person's whole private life or their whole history. I think in the case of this young actor, he's not done living his history. He's just at the start of it. And Taylor Swift, we've known since she was a child, her history is being written currently and she's Mm -hmm. going to evolve. And we have to give, I mean, look at like Rebel Wilson has a girlfriend now, I believe. That is something. For sure. That's they, she definitely different. does. They were at many Halloween parties. <laughs> I saw lots of pictures 
on you just Jared I mean? on yeah, my Instagram. You know what I mean? Over and I think back to like Janelle Monet when she first came out, we didn't have an understanding of like what her private life was. And people made a lot of assumptions based on whatever, like, you know, people project onto people that they admire a lot. And, um, and I just think that, you know, nothing is to say that in, you know, five years, you might have a girlfriend. I don't fucking know. I don't know. Listen, we never know. We never know. Glennon Doyle, who's been on the podcast, was like well-known, happily married, public appearance, you know, to a man. And that's where she like sort of rose to notoriety. And now she's in a really high profile same sex relationship with Abby Wambach. And they have this whole wonderful life. And that that's like something that I don't know that she knew about herself at the time. And, you know, and She's been allowed to evolve into that. So when we're talking about representation, about like culture or race, that's a thing that you know about yourself. Like it's just, you know, it's just in you. And no matter the cultural complications, particularly around culture or race, that usually just is your culture or race. You know what I mean? There's not anything you can do to change it. You can deny it or ignore it. Uh, But, you know, at the end of the day, everybody can see by looking at me a white lady. Everyone can see by looking at you a white lady. But in terms of, like, sexuality and gender fluidity, that's a thing that, like, people don't always immediately know about you. People like to make a lot of assumptions because that makes things more comfortable for them. But it's often sometimes something that someone has to come to terms with and figure out for themselves and evolve on it throughout their lives, like deciding, you know, deciding exactly where they fit on that spectrum, where they fall on that spectrum. And, you know, so it's just a thing that I think we're going to have to, like, relax and let people live their histories a little bit without being so quick. But I also, like, yeah. So just, like, I don't know. I, I And I, my heart breaks for that kid because I feel like he wasn't ready to, like, right come out in any way and to publicly, I mean. Right. And and this is going to change the trajectory of his life and the way he feels about people going forward. He's I know, and it, su- it really sucks. I like, it makes me, it made me, when I saw it last night, I was like, oh man. Yeah. Like, and I know I could, I felt like from the tone of the tweet that I'm sure he's talked to a lot of people in the last like month or so about it, probably like family, you know, like just in terms of he's, he seems like he's just a very, I, I don't know. I really like him as an actor and like I've seen interviews with him through yeah. Birdie. Like he seems really like just sweethearted. Yeah. And I, and it, the tone of the tweet to me just feels like he was like, fuck it. I just have to do this. Right. And I, it makes me so sad because I just. Because something that should have been beautiful. Yes. Like him deciding, like, I'm ready to do this is now like, it's ugly. You know? know? And And not a pleasant memory. No. Yeah. That's a, that's a bummer. I think, I think we do have to, to pump the brakes a little bit. It's complicated, right? It's complicated because he's in the public eye. And so, you know, anyone else, maybe maybe if he was just a high school or college student, it wouldn't have gone down that way. But because people feel like they've invested their interest in him and their their support in him that they have a right to know um, to make sure, I guess, that he's not bamboozling people or whatever, but here's, I mean, this was my, this is my other point. Like as an actor, I'm like, so what? Like, so what if he's, he is straight? So fucking what? What? Like his performance is beautiful on that show. He plays like a questioning teenager who starts a relationship with a boy. Right. Who has dated girls previously. Right. Like, 
I don't know, a little bit, I get like, so what? Like, why is someone's, I mean, and this is where I'm like, it's complicated, right? Because right. like, I do think like trans actors, obviously, like I prefer for trans actors to play trans roles. And I think that most right. trans actors that, I mean, I'm friends with some trans actors yeah. and they definitely are like, yeah, dude, we should be playing, like, but right. also like, we don't need, you know, we don't need to be playing trans roles either. We can play any roles like, you know, right. or exactly. Like we could say, yeah, right. Correct. Um, but it's, but a little bit like this is where as the actor in me, for me, it's not so black and white. Like the right. show itself is full of representation. Like the story it's telling is beautiful and inclusive and, and like very, very well done. Those books, the Heartstopper books are brilliant. Yeah. So and they were clearly like, thoughtful about yes, it. Yes. And they were obviously very thoughtful in everything about the diversity in the casting from like top to bottom, right? So what if Kit Connor is like, you know what I mean? Like who fucking cares? Like it sucks that, I mean, it's just or like, what hurts. if in real life he's questioning and and it turns out the the answer to the question is I'm straight. We right. don't know that and we're not entitled but to know that. I, that's and what I'm saying. I'm yeah. just saying like we're not entitled to like you have to look at the whole picture of a right. thing. Like if it's if it's like um you know some sort of like projects where uh you know a non-trans actor like where it's like all non-trans actors playing trans women, you know, playing trans characters and like, you know, you have to just take into consideration the context of all of it. Like, it's not right. just, it's not just about like a gay character play or a gay person playing a gay character. Or, you know what I mean? Right. Representationally wise. What? Right. That's not a word busy, but you know, but it's like a whole, we have to be more able to look at the whole picture. Oh my God. I finally got to it. <laughs> It's interesting. I think we're at a critical place because I am seeing more and more like, and we've talked about this, where people are like, I don't like this show because it has a toxic character. And I'm like, yeah, that's called a villain. And like a lot of shows need one because if everyone was non-toxic, it wouldn't be much of a story, you know? Or like this person on this show, I was really blindsided by they did this really bad thing that was upsetting to me. And it's like, yeah, that's... That's like that's how storytelling works. We learn from the mistakes that characters make in the shows that we watch. If they didn't make mistakes, it would be boring. You know, same as with like reality television, people are like, why do housewives go to a party and then they get into a fight? I'm like, well, if it was about like having calm lunches and, uh, you know, just uh, discussions about their business dealings or whatever, it wouldn't be much of a show. It wouldn't be enticing to watch. It wouldn't be interesting. So like conflict. Well, right. But you know how I feel. <laughs> yeah, I, I do know how you feel. But I'm saying like it's intoxicating to people. But also scripted television, like mm -hmm. make them ups, uh, like I like to call it, whether dramatic or comedic, it needs conflict. Right. It can't be conflict free. Otherwise it's like, Coco melon for kids. You know what I mean? Like it's just like what are you, what would be the reason you would watch that? You know, <laughs> like it, uh, TV needs conflict. That is what uh, entertainment books need conflict. They need conflicted characters. Right. They need characters that make mistakes. They need characters often that aren't good people. Because that is what drives a story. That's what drives your hero to succeed against, you know. So it's, I think we're at an interesting place where I'll be just really interested to see what happens in entertainment going forward. Because it seems like consumers of entertainment have a lot to say about what they're wanting from both the entertainment material itself and from the people who are creating it and the people who are appearing in it. And uh, I don't know that it's 100% tenable. Right. Um, so I'll be interested to see, like, again, who knows, maybe in four years, five years, there will be like a completely conflict-free sitcom. 
I don't know. I don't know. Well, I will say a little bit like, um, yeah, that's not, it's there. I mean, it won't be interesting. It won't be interesting to watch. No. Right. But, no. uh, but I think that like being thoughtful and like specific. Yeah. More specific and more thoughtful about as story, like as a story teller, as a person making TV or films in terms of like what conflicts are needed to be explored right. and which ones feel like a retread of the same ideas culturally yes. that we need to be done with. Yes. Yeah. And like, for me, that's where it is. Like I have yeah. obviously many friends who are writers. I'm selling, I'm like, I have a TV show that I came up with the idea for that I'm like going to go out with for myself to be in. That's like, diff like it's like evolved. Like I yeah. initially, like a pre-pandemic vibes, I had like that other show with yeah. Ada Calhoun, you know, who wrote Why We Can't Sleep and we adapted that for TV and it like ended up not going. But, and then my new managers were like really into it and they're like, I feel like we could like try to like read, figure this out, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, eh. I want to say something else now. Like I have a different right. thing that I want to say. Like I, right. and it's not like that the show is going to just be like good people being good. It's right. like, it's like dealing with the questions of like this particular moment in time. Right. I don't know. And I just feel like so frequently in entertainment, especially people like, fall back on the same tropes and the same like regurgitated storylines because they feel like that's all that people want and can handle. And I just think that's bullshit and lazy. Well, and good. that's why I don't like the housewives. <laughs> it is certainly intoxicating to a number of people. You know what? I like my favorite thing. I was so tired last night. Before I laid my head down on my pillow, against my better judgment, I opened Twitter one last time just to, you know, like you do. It's muscle memory at yeah. this point. You just want to check before I close my eyes, has anything insane happened in this world? Mm -hmm. And I opened it and saw Mariah Carey's video. Have you seen it? Where no. she's a witch? No. <laughs> She, Mariah Carey mm. had a tweet where she just said, it's time. And there's a video where she's like the witch on a bicycle from The Wizard of Oz. And she's laughing maniacally. Oh, my God. Did she in, steal Ray's bit? It's in black and white. <laughs> and then it cuts to her as Christmas Mariah, <laughs> like <laughs> announcing that. <laughs> that it's, it's time to move time on. For all I want for Christmas is you. She's a genius. She's undefeated. It is thanks to her that I have fully embraced what I'm calling the Christmas quarter, which is November, December, January. Christmas will be celebrated. Christmas music will be listened to. We'll have twinkly lights. We'll have decorations. We'll be cozy. We will drink things that, as Mariah Carey likes to say, are festive. <laughs> That's her favorite word, festive, I think. And uh, it just delighted me to death to see that before I went to bed last night. My I love her. I love that she's the queen of Christmas. I do I'm too. so happy she makes a billion dollars every year from that song. <laughs> She's the real life character in About a Boy. I think she would never have to do another thing and she could easily live off of the money from All I Want for Christmas is You. It's a banger. It's It holds up. Never get tired of that song. Honestly, it is such a fucking banger. <laughs> never, never get tired. I never of, get tired. I never get tired either. Of that song or that video. And, Wait, uh, can I ask you a question yeah and I'm really like this is just I don't want to be what the fuck is GOTV GOTV like GOTV like, get out the vote 
Oh, that's it? Yeah. It means get people to go vote. Really? Yeah. (laughs) Did you think it was a streaming platform? I did. (laughs) And you were like, why are all these politicians? I really really was like, what is this new platform? You're like, why don't I have a show on GOTV? Should we do my talk show on GOTV? (laughs) I like, swear to God, Casey, I felt like such an idiot for like years now where I'm like and I feel like at some point I knew that that's what that was but the way that people use it do you understand that the way that people use GOTV is confusing yeah yeah no, you don't I, you don't get it you don't get the way my brain knew, works I always you don't knew get- what it was so yeah so I can't but I cannot understand how that would yeah That's found Mariah's the, I found video. the video. <laughs> She's on a Peloton. <laughs> it's time. <laughs> oh my God. She looks amazing. Undefeated. She's, undefeated. She's amazing. Deceptively tall. Love her. She's hilarious I'm to me. Obsessed. I think that Mariah Carey should be the star of a sitcom, but frankly, she doesn't need to. No, and, and so that's, no. I'm a big fan of telling people that are fabulously famous and wealthy beyond measure. Why would you do that? You don't need to do that. <laughs> that's a lot of work. It would make you unhappy. But um, she's hilarious, and I love that she went to that effort. Okay, I. Are you going back to GOTV? Yes, because I just I, <laughs> now. <laughs> Guys, please don't think I'm an idiot. I have a lot going on. My brain works so fast. I do so many things, and sometimes I don't know what acron like what acronyms stand for. But like, how are we supposed to know? There's no guide. There's, no, There's no guide. There's no legend on the side of no. Twitter explaining no. all the hashtags. And I don't spend that much time on Twitter. So like right. for me, it's like uh, I just dip in and out. Right. And, and, you know, a lot of people, I don't, do you even <laughs> really use hashtags? Me? No. Like I know people put them for like a bit or whatever, but the like the use of the hashtag is you're supposed to be able to click on it and see a lot of tweets about the same subject so if you never clicked on GOTV but I see people use I see people use GOTV just not with without a hashtag yeah yeah because people don't use hashtags <sighs> properly it's not your fault well and by the way not, I bet not my fault I bet we're informing at least seven people right That's now rude what, of you that was <laughs> <rude>. <laughs> what GOTV means get out the Guys. vote Guys, get out the vote. And you know what? <laughs> We're gonna. We're gonna get out the vote. Uh, I need to, like, go, I guess, get ready soon. I don't you gotta know. You got to go so to tired. your glamour. Uh, we yes. didn't say, what are you doing your best at? Real quick. Oh, I had something good. Hmm. You go first. I'm going to remember mine. Okay. Um, I did my best at going to the things that I said I was going to go to and then like giving myself time to recover because like my social stamina isn't what it once was. So I went to a wedding. I went to that event uh, where I got a massage, a real hardship, I know. Um, But it was very social. And I met a lot of um, very statuesque influencers who were also models. um, And I was the only like regular person there, which was funny. Um, And then I went to our friend's birthday party and hung out with a lot of our friends. Um, Craig Kukowski told me an amazing ghost story that really uh, I can't stop thinking about. Actor Craig Kukowski and yes. uh, 
And um, and then, you know, despite, like, being a little bummed out about not being invited to, like, the cool Halloween parties that I saw on Instagram, I also was like, it's okay. Like, I'm... I'm I didn't see any, so... You didn't? Oh. No. I think, like, I... You know how I'm always saying, like, diversify your timeline? Like... I do, I think I do follow a little too many younger people and I'm like, I want to do the things they're doing. And it's just like, it's not where I'm at in my life. You know what I mean? And like, there's nothing sadder than being like, uh, the mascot of like young, cool people, you know? So like, I don't, I don't need to be like, I didn't need to be at any of those parties, but I did have like a teeny bit of FOMO, but also I handled it. And then I had a great, Halloween Monday night handing out candy. So it's all good. I love that. It's all good. It's yeah. Um I did my best at <laughs> <laughs> You guys can't see me, but I'm like <laughs> just making a face. Like you're sticking really my, struggling. Sticking my tongue out. <laughs> Um, what did I do my best at? Um, I don't know, but I organized my bathroom. That's good. Yeah, it really was. I'm sure it really was great. It did. And I really did it. And I did feel like I did my best at Halloween for my kids this year. Yeah. But again, as I said, can't take full credit because they both had very specific visions. Clear ideas. Well, that's Clear helpful. ideas, which is very helpful. And it allowed me to shine where I shine. Yes. Which is ordering things online that are delivered <laughs> to the house in enough time. And I didn't have to pay extra in a for them to manner. get, for them to get rushed. Um, I'm proud that I, okay, so I'm doing my best. I do feel like I did my best at that. And then also I did Birdie's hair yeah. and I woke up at 630 in the morning and like really did it and then let's yeah. sprayed it with that spray and the root was, touch up root touch up it was pretty gross which a I lot of people everywhere. i've been seeing in the makeup tutorials are using to put freckles on themselves oh good lord um that makes sense to me because you can kind of like like flick it spritz it yes but mm-hmm. what i will say is that um It could also really go wrong because it seems like it's the last step you do after all your makeup is on. And uh, if it goes wrong and you just put like a a four-inch brown mold. I don't want to say who was um, ahead of the putting freckles on their face trend. (laughs) I I don't want to say who did it before there was even a filter for it. (laughs) With just an, an eyebrow pencil... And too much stone time on her hands. <laughs> I don't want to tell you who did it in the year 2015. Yeah. But it was your girl. Yeah. You, I mean, who knows? You opened the door to freckles, to the em- embracing of freckles. Remember that I know was what Julia Roberts was like obsessed with me about? Do you remember that? Is it? That yeah. that, 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 that post she was like obsessed with like the, yeah, she, oh my God, Oprah's favorite things came out. Ah, we have to look at it. Is it? <sighs> this is might be there? a special. I mean, this this might be. Um, you know what? This might be a Substack. This a might be sub my sub. Stack. This might be my Substack post. Yeah, yeah. Um. Also, you should put your whole speech that you wrote for the glamour. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> Since you can only say a hundred words of it, you should put the whole thing up there. Because what else are you going to use it for? I'm going to eat it. And gonna, and plus, we won't be there with you. I'm going to tear it glamour. up and eat it. <laughs> uh, no, you won't be. And that is sad for me. Um, but you guys are always with me because you're in my heart. And you're in our pockets, kind of, on our phones at all times. For sure. Birdie just texted me from school, post the photos of me on set with young royals. And I'm like, oh my God, Birdie. Birdie's literally never demanded I post anything. Wow. So this feels... <laughs> you know, I've never looked at the Oprah's favorite things on the internet before. I've only looked at it in the magazine. Or on the show. 
or on the show. Remember, why doesn't she do like- a spe- why doesn't she do a special? Why doesn't she do? She has a network. She could. Why doesn't she do? And Oprah's favorite things every year. She can still do the thing. They can get like teachers or first responders or whatever. Yeah. And get them all in a fucking studio and fly them to Montecito. I don't care. <laughs> I'm just saying we need this, Oprah. We need this. We it's need time. it. It's as Mariah Carey said, it's time. It's it's a great idea. It's a great <laughs> idea. It would be the number one most watched thing of all time. Let's be real. Yeah. I do, we would I do all not, do it. I do not disagree with you. The fun of having it in the studio is people losing their fucking that's minds. What I, that's what I'm saying. It, it has to be like a one night only special event. You asked for it. I did. We're giving it to you. Here are all these like, you know dog rescuers, like people who've yeah. been nominated. They pick the people. And like, and listen, then, you can bring out Harry and Meghan and interview them sure. about, just make sure whatever the favorite thing is, like ties into what, what they're talking about, you know? Correct. You can bring out, who else has she done like those great one-on-ones with? Who knows? But you can like, it Viola doesn't have Davis. to be, yeah, it doesn't have to be all just giving shit away, but there should be like, it should I'm be like saying, 75% giving shit away. I'm saying, Quarterly, what yeah. I'm going to need moving forward in this world yeah, is I'm going to need Oprah quarterly in the yeah. studio giving away free shit. Yeah. I need that. And I need holiday specials. I need comedy variety holiday specials quarterly as well. We like, should have love- sold one. Why didn't we do one this year? We're going to do that other thing, but... Yeah, I I don't know what the market is for, but I think that... And I'm not like Casey Musgraves. Like, you have to be like a huge star, I think. Yeah, yeah. I think, or like, I don't know. I don't... I mean, Girls 5 Eva should do one. Yes, Girls 5 Eva should do one. Yeah, it's a crazy idea. Could we do it in time? I think we could. I'm going to... I'm texting right now. I'm texting right now. I'm texting (laughs) right now. Text everyone right now. I'm texting everyone. Um, I'm texting everyone. Yeah, that's I. I need holiday specials, uh, you know, and I need more claymation. I need more stop motion animation. But I need I need all the things from my life that I've loved and that I gave my time to. And I'm still here. So how can we have moved past those things? You know, what we're I'm not. Saying? We're not. Pa- I'm not past them for sure. This not. is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. Let's get him back. It's time. It's time. All right, guys. We love you so much. Don't forget to vote. You've got six days if you haven't already. Fucking get on it. What are you doing? (laughs) And um, just a reminder that next week, the podcast won't come out on Wednesday morning. It will be out on Thursday Mm -hmm. once we have a chance Mm -hmm. to, like, digest what's happened Mm -hmm. in the Mm -hmm. elections. Um, so make it good. The power is in your hands to, uh, to get out there and vote and make sure that a hundred other people, you know, vote a thousand, get Mm -hmm. everyone to vote, get out the vote. (laughs) GOTV. I love you. We love you. Bye. 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 (laughs) I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm doing my best. Oh, no.